Good evening, free enterprise fans, and welcome out to the finals of the Hummingway Open. Uh, we have four excellent racers trying to claim the inaugural Hopin title tonight. My name is Invenerable. I'm joined here in the booth with Maggie the Cat. Maggie, how are you tonight? Hey, Invenerable and free enterprise fans. I'm doing wonderful. Very excited to be back here tonight for another excellent race. Uh, last night we saw the uh, league final with uh, Invenerable yourself and three other excellent runners. And now we're seeing four more excellent runners with uh, Dia Paranoia. La Paz and Tingle Nader uh, looking to take the championship of the, the first Hummingway Open uh, final match. Absolutely. And just a reminder, rest of our crew tonight, we do have Scala Kitty, Scala Kitty handling the restream, and we have Gambit 017 taking care of tracking, so we don't miss out on uh, what's going on with all four racers, you know, doing their thing. Uh, for those of you who are curious, the Hummingway Open was our open Swiss-style tournament this year that everyone accrued certain points for how well they did. Anyone could enter it, unlike Zima Sun, where you had to qualify. And these four have uh, risen above the competition, and they are ready to show what they've uh, what skills they've developed these past couple of months. We do have a Yang start, and we should be kicking it off soon. What are you looking to see tonight, Maggie? Well, I know everybody was super hyped to see uh, during the, the league a, um, a demist hunt, like demist behind uh, one of the a giant of Babel bosses, something like that. And we didn't actually get to see that during the, the Zemus Zone League. So maybe we're going to see that tonight. Uh, these are the same flags as the Highway to the Zemus Zone League. Uh, so, um, you know, we are going to be looking for both the Adamant and the Legend Sword in order to forge our crystal. And if one of those items is being held by the Demist, it's possible that they're going to have to go find that Demist to get a piece of the crystal that they need in order to face Zeromus. Absolutely. And we do have a pretty spicy start here. We have an Earth Crystal, uh, which gives access to the Tower of Zod, but probably more importantly, the Trojan Treasury. There's a lot of free loot there. You can definitely get your economy kick-started. You can find some good gear, more for Sid than for Yong. There's not a whole lot he can equip. Most of his strength comes from levels rather than from equipment. Uh, but yeah, very potent start. Of course, two characters available there once you are strong enough to blast through. Uh, let's see if anyone actually does the traditional Baron loot or if they all fly. Okay. We have two going to loot Troya, both Dia and LaFaz. Tingle Nader's sticking with the end of the regular play. Let's loot Baron. Let's see what we got. Let's see who's in the end. And Paranoia says, I've got a Sid. I don't need much else in this early game. Let's go ahead and head on up to Damsian and Antlion Cave. Yeah, absolutely. That Sid starts out very strong, uh, starts out with some extra levels compared to a lot of the characters who start out, you know, kind of around level 10. Um, Sid starts out, I believe, at level 20 and also starts out with that wooden hammer, which is a, a pretty good starting weapon. Uh, so he, right out the gate, he can usually take on the boss at Antlion Cave all by himself, even without a lot of extra equipment. Um, and doing the Dancian checks here and then the checks that are in the Antlion Cave for the extra loot, usually, usually Sid's going to be able to to solo whatever is available for them down there. Absolutely, and we did see some pretty nice stuff in the private treasury, the private reserve up in Troya. There was a ninja blade. If we find an edge, that's a wonderful weapon for him. Uh, saw a dwarf axe, the only weapon that lets us back row glitch Kane, letting him do full damage from either row, uh, and headband bandana good little pieces of gear that give a nice strength boost to all these big burly bruisers yeah and i saw paranoia here just picked up a black sword from one of the chests in antlion cave if we do happen to find an early dark knight cecil that's going to be a pretty nice find for him uh, dark knight cecil always regarded as the weakest character in the game uh, before you get him upgraded into a paladin but the black sword is actually pretty useful it does boost most of his stats and it also has the ability to uh swoon or instant kill any monsters that do not have the boss bit which some bosses actually are not actually considered bosses, uh, like the Dark Imps, for example, and so they can actually be inflicted with that swoon status and instant killed. Oh, yeah. Fantastic piece of gear. If you're going to be keeping the Dark Knight around for any reasonable length of time, you really want that sword. Uh, pretty other spicy gear here, too, that Paranoia's found. Again, Paranoia skipped Baron 
Skip Troya that has these Zeus gauntlets, has an elven bow with some arrows. That's my favorite early game bow. Uh, does best accuracy of any bow. Doesn't have the stat boosts of samurai or Artemis bows, uh, but it also gives you quadruple damage versus mage types. Very nice weapon. Yeah, excellent to keep around even if you do have the more po uh, powerful bows, just in order to be able to do the extra damage against those mage type enemies like uh, Mega Sisters. Uh, I also saw down on Tigglenator's screen that he did the vanilla Demist check looking for Demist in the Mist Cave and actually ran into Wyvern. So I'm sure that uh, he and maybe the rest of the runners, if they go to make the, that check themselves, is going to be very, very happy uh, to know that they're not actually going to have to fight Wyvern in any other spot later in the game. Yeah, Wyvern's out of the pool. Pale Dim is out of the pool. Pale Dim's one of those lunar bosses that's usually not too bad. Uh, all it does is hit you. Uh, it will counter physical attacks with slow, counter certain magics with other counters, but pretty much as long as you're just tanking physical hits, you can deal with it in most places. So uh, one boss out of the pool we're glad to see gone, one that we kind of wish we could have later. And is this even randomized? We got a sand ruby for fighting Antlion in Antlion Cave. Yeah, like what, uh, very vanilla there, uh, but I guess it will allow them to pick up that second Sid that we just saw sitting in the Kaipo bed. I think we got to call a mulligan. Scala, you forgot to randomize the seed. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I guess we'll see if anything else. I know last night's game, everybody was kind of wondering what, uh, where the randomizer button was as well, because we saw several things that had not been randomized in the league final as well. We'll see if there's anything else that decides to not get shuffled in this uh, Hope and final tonight. And by the way, speaking of more bosses that you don't want out of the boss pool this early, we find the Kaipo guards here on top of Hobbs guarding a cane. This is one of those fights that does not have the boss bit, so that hourglass is going to freeze them all in place. They're not doing anything the rest of this fight, letting Lafage just wear them down at his leisure. Uh, also notable, when we started the game, it was King Evelyn who gave us that starting Earth Crystal. So that's another free fight here on the Blue Planet. We're already kind of running low on some of those things you'd like to see on the moon eventually. That was a really nice check by you. I actually missed it. Um, the uh, character or the boss that gives the initial key item. So yeah, those are like half of our, what we consider free bosses out of play. Uh, of course, you hope to see those in places like the moon or the Fame March bosses, uh, but seeing them here either in really early spots or in spots like in Miss Cave or somewhere like that, that you're not even gonna have to go to really kind of hurts the runners in the long run. And we have a very, I mean, you know, I said the, the, the beefy brute team. We have a Yong, a Kane, we have two Sids uh, <laughs> already in play from these very early checks. Uh, I, did you see who was in the Baron Inn? I know that uh, Tingle Nader was the only one who peeked it, and I was too busy focusing on gear to see who the character was. I didn't, but chat is saying that it was another Sid, oh. so <laughs> yet another bruiser, yes. <laughs> well, all right. Uh, team engineer, I mean, it is free enterprise. Uh, this airship is going to be kept in the the most pristine of condition for the entire seed clearly i mean um, eventually if you do everything you end up with three uh airships you're going to need three engineers in order to maintain your three airships right oh yeah yeah makes a lot of sense <laughs> absolutely uh, so that does make things interesting so if we end up with a hook seed here which i'm rooting for all of a sudden you start to hope that you find a white mage somewhere we do have that earth crystal which gives two more characters if we do find a hook there will be a character uh there in cave eblin uh, so it'll be kind of neat to see what route people take you know some people myself included if i have a good enough team i like to skip tower of zot if my team is good enough you know it's a long long walk uh sometimes you get really good characters sometimes you find two edwards so it's always a gamble uh it'll be fun to see if uh if our racers have to take that route to actually get some white magic for the team 
Yeah, absolutely. And Zot, like you said, it's two characters, but it's only one key item check. And sometimes, especially with these flags, since key items can be shuffled among both moon bosses and the summons, it might not even be a key item. You could end up with a ninja shirt or a glass helm if you go <laughs> all the way up Zot. So that, you know, if, if your reward for going all the way up there is two Edwards and a glass helm, well, that's just not your lucky day then, is it? <laughs> Not really, not really. Uh, we're getting a lot of crisscross right now. Uh, Paranoia did finally go and join in the loot fest that is the Trojan Treasury. Dia's wrapped up Antlion Cave. Lafaz is heading down there now. Uh, so at this point, we're pretty much looking to see where people decide to go next. Uh, the bull makes a lot of sense. It's kind of the next difficulty tier up, uh, but with two SIDs, there are a lot of places you can handle in the overworld. So maybe we'll see a little uh, divergence from the racers at that point. Yeah, absolutely. Since we um, we do have that Earth Crystal, that's a little bit of a more difficult check for them. But the other locations that they could go to, of course, that Baron Inn would give them a, yet another SID and a potential key item. And then there's also the uh, Mount Ordeals, which is kind of a long check. There's three bosses up there, so that potentially would give them three places to look for. And with these flag sets, as we've mentioned before, um, D-Mist, if and when they find D-Mist and defeat it, then they can go talk to her in Mist, uh, Mist Village, and then she could potentially hold a key item for them as well. So even though um, Mount Ordeals is kind of a long check, there's that potential. And if they find a Cecil or a Tella, completing Mount Ordeals will also power up their Cecil into a Paladin and unlock all of Tella's spells as well. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, there is uh, we do have the Fu Challenge flag on. So Fusoya doesn't start at full power under this flag set. Each boss you beat, though, does give three more spells and 100 more HP. Ordeals, that's nine more spells, 300 more HP. Very easy way to power him up before tackling uh, rude underworld bosses or anything gating your path to the underworld. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, Fabul is, is the next, uh, can, uh, like, canonical location that they would go to if we were following the vanilla routing, but they do have several locations that are available to them here. Um, it looks like maybe Lafaz down on the lower left is going to be heading to Fabul next. Um, Paranoia is doing some shopping. He's in Mesidia now, which is near Mount Ordeals, so we'll see if he decides to scale that mountain or possibly go north to Baron uh, next instead. Yeah. And I do note that although Dia got that sand ruby, Dia Pete, who was in the bed beforehand and has chosen to delay picking up that Sid, uh, could possibly intend to save him long term for an endgame agility anchor to make sure his uh, his speed is correct for those endgame fights. Could just be not caring about getting another Sid at this point. We've seen, well, I don't think Dia's seen the one in Baron Inn, but could just be these three are enough. Let me go and knock out the overworld with a smaller team. We'll We'll build it up if we need to. Yeah, definitely. Agility anchoring is going to be something very important since Zeromus's agility is going to be, with these flags anyway, is going to be based on the character uh, who's in the middle position in your party. And um, if you set it up correctly, you can actually make it so that the rest of your party is uh, considerably faster if you have somebody with a very low agility. And since Sid has naturally got a very low agility, it's it wouldn't be a bad idea at all to hang on to that Sand Ruby and then recruit him at a low level so that he's got a low agility for the final boss. Yep. We do have Bayan invading the uh, invading the Fabul castle here. Uh, shouldn't be too difficult to fight with this team. Uh, I mean, we're a beefy team ourselves. Plenty of HP, good heavy armor on Kane. Even he, with his relatively low HP, isn't taking a lot per punch. Uh, just going to be a matter of time to get through this fight. It's pretty nice to see Bygan here, actually, because he can be super rude in the wrong location. Like if he's up on the moon, I've seen him at that Ogopogo spot up on the moon, and he can he can be uh, really nasty in a higher uh, a higher enemy location uh, than this. So it's nice to get him out of the pool early, uh, like in a location like this. Yeah, just the fact that he has three separate parts that each get their own attacks. If he's in a place that's fast and strong, all of a sudden the body and each arm is punching you for well over four digits of damage and you're just having a rough time. 
It looks like we're getting a magma key uh, from the King of Fabul for defending Fabul Castle. And so the, the hope of a rude hopin hook seed is dashed. I know everybody was hoping for it. Uh, these hopin seeds have been super rude to our runners. We all know it. Uh, but now our finalists are going to get a little bit of a break. That magma seed or magma key rather is going to allow the runners to uh, get access to the underworld just by dropping that seed in the well in Eggart and flying the airship straight down into the underworld. Yep. The, uh, the seeds, which have been notoriously difficult, we've had ones, I believe, that had just the worst of the worst bosses you can find at the Rubicante spot, guarding on hook seeds, uh, not having to deal with that tonight. Uh, the downside, though, for our racers is that this opens up their possibilities immensely. Uh, they all have to make their own routes at this point. It's not we're all being funneled into one place. Uh, so right now, we have access to Ordeals, Baron Inn, Tower of Zod, Dwarf Castle, uh, a free key item and two rude fights in Fey March. Well, or could be free at this point with this team. We never know. Uh, and Sheila has an item if you're willing to walk all the way through Sylph Cave and back up to her. Oh, and you could single dip Lower Babel if you wanted to. So just at this point, our racers have a ton of things to choose from. We'll have to see how efficiently they make those checks going forward. Yeah, absolutely. And if say somebody goes to uh, like the Fame March and gets the free item out of the chest there and immediately finds a darkness crystal. Uh, that's just going to open up, uh, what is it, like seven more checks for them and is going to open their uh, possibilities even wider. Yeah, because we do, uh, we have already seen sirens in the Baron Town shop, which actually is at least a couple of our racers haven't been there yet. Uh, so sirens are available for that kind of grind. I believe most of our racers found a stack of Artemis arrows. So dragon damage is on the table. Uh, if you want to fight those gold dragons on the moon for tons of XP and cash. Uh, lots of doors could open very quickly here, depending on what that underground freebie is. Yeah, I really like to see this because um, hopefully we're going to see a lot of divergence. Uh, and, you know, that's it's, it's pretty fun to just see what the different routing is and what the different um, play styles are from all of our different runners. Absolutely. There's some people who love to make those moon attempts as soon as possible, just because you very rarely get punished in Free Enterprise for doing for grinding early. Uh, it may cost you a little bit of time, but if you run to a road bump boss, those levels can save your bacon in a way that your opponents might not necessarily have been prepared for. Looks like Dia is going to stay along the standard path here, is doing, um, well, I guess Ordeals technically would have been next, but as we've talked about, Ordeals is a pretty long check, so is doing Baron in next, which is a pretty short check. There are two bosses here, but this first boss spot has uh, got very low hit points. As you can see, was able to take that Rubicante down very quickly, and now there's going to be a second boss. Uh, looks like this is Leviathan, um, and so he will get uh, both a Sid and a potential key item is if he is able to get through this Leviathan here. Uh, Leviathan opens with a big wave. We'll do one quarter of any given character's max HP to them. And then we'll start flinging ice twos, which, uh, you know, young, the young spot, Karate Man spot here in Baron Inn may not have the highest magic attack power, but it's good enough to still work over this party at their low levels. So wisely using a Star Veil on Sid and Leviathan, targeting the targeting that star veil eating every ice two in its own face very fortunate for dia this fight won't last long yeah yeah very nice play it looked like he did have a pretty good uh stack of star veils he had seven or eight of them so he he had enough that he could use at least one here um and then if he has cure potions he may not even need them but if if he did need to heal sit up if he's got at least a you know one or two cure two potions he could use that to heal him up from the big wave but it looks like he's not even going to need it yep and for beating him up. We get a white spear, uh, one of Kane's best weapons. Uh, you know, sometimes there are situations where you'd rather have a defense sword or a dragoon spear just because of, you know, enemy weaknesses, resistances and such. White spear, fantastic weapon. Highest base attack power for Kane. Uh, if the enemy resists wholly, not, you know, you'll be doing reduced damage then. Uh, but fantastic pickup for any of our racers who go ahead and uh, clear this spot. 
yeah, not a key item, but uh, it definitely, especially since we're finding it so early in the seed, it's going to power everybody's cane up immensely. And it looks like both Paranoia and La Paz have followed Adia into Baron Inn and possibly Tingle Nader. It looks like Tingle Nader is going to be following them as well. So it looks like um, all of our runners are going to be finding that White Spear very quickly to power their cane up. Oh yeah, it, 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 you know, it always seems that you find, when you find loot items like that, you get something like we were saying earlier, a ninja shirt, a glass mask, a drain spear, or you get the item, but you never see the character. You know, you find big ninja swords for Edge, you find the crystal sword for Cecil, and then they never even pop up. To have both the character and the weapon, uh, especially this early in a seed, all our racers are gonna get a ton of mileage out of that and have a real good time with that spear. Yeah, absolutely. Very fortunate that uh, they went here as soon as they did and found that item. And uh, honestly, doing Baron in, um, like we said, it's it's a pretty fast check. Uh, there's no dungeon to go through. It is two bosses, but the first one's very, very quick. So that's a pretty heads up play for our runners who did it, um, since it is a pretty quick check, all things considered. Yeah, chat pointing out, though, that it seems that I'm guessing Dia, well, yeah, must have sold the White Spear, choosing to get that huge stack of cash instead. Must not be a Kane fan. Very interesting. I mean, it is going to sell for a ton of money. And with these flag sets, uh, J items are on. So there's a lot of Japanese items that are for sale. Things like hourglasses, coffins, uh, star veils, things like that, uh, that are all pretty pricey. So if there was something that he was wanting a stack of or, you know, that he uh, needed to, wanted to buy right away, um, that could pay off for him, especially if he's not planning on keeping Kane or maybe if he, I don't I'm not sure what else he's found found a uh, weapon that he's satisfied with for Kane. Yeah, but it is, uh, you know, I just saw that he also has a crystal armor in his inventory. That's a piece of gear that a lot of people like to sell as well. Uh, it, it It's really great defense for a Paladin Cecil, but it's kind of double-edged in that it also prevents you from being berserked through any means other than the Avenger Sword. So a lot of people usually prefer to sell that for financing, but you know, if, you, uh, if you're if you just rushing through your inventory, you're looking for something that'll sell for a lot, I can get it. But I, I think there might've been a more, a, a, a more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? A, a more patient means of getting your money, I suppose. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And now uh, we'll have to watch Dia's screen when he goes into his inventory. Um, there's some debate whether he sold the white spear or white arrow. Oh, okay. Because... That would be that would make a lot more sense. Oh Ab my goodness. Absolutely. Yes. Chat, chat, terrifying me over here. I'm like, what has happened here? But, okay. Absolutely. White arrows certainly have their uses. Um, Mylon Z in particular is weak to both. Uh, holy elemental and arrows, which we can talk about if we find him. Um, but uh, yeah, there we go. It looks like Dia yeah. is okay. equipping the Thank white uh, the white spear. So yes, he must have sold the white arrows. So white arrows do have their uses, but not. Yeah, I don't think nearly as much as a white spear at this point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought this was some real hog wild galaxy brain play, but. Uh... See, that's what I get for trusting Twitch chat. I got my eye on you, chat. I got my eye right. on you. <laughs> all right, so it looks like all of our runners are now diving into the underground. I don't think anybody has gone to Ordeals yet or uh, Tower of Zot. So those are both still on, the, on play. Um, it looks like several of them have done or are doing the standard egg grind, which is a very standard grind. Um, we see both Paranoia and La Faz in it right now. If you use a siren on this little peninsula on the western side of the underground, it will summon an egg. Uh, and the egg does have, a, I believe it's a yellow dragon inside of it. But if you just one shot it, or use something like a coffin on it that instant kills it, it gives a, like 30,000 XP. It's, it's a great way to grind early in the game once you get underground access. <laughs> and we do have my favorite boss fight here in the uh, <laughs> here in the Dwarf Castle, the full group of elements all dancing together. Uh, Paranoia visits the temp job dwarf and sees that uh, today the dwarf is a mental health counselor and uh, Tinglenator gets a Bahamut summon from the Rat Tail Chest, the Vanilla Rat Tail Chest, in the Fey March. So lots of new information, some more meme and fun, some of it more germane to our racers' interests. 
uh, and ooh, a couple rude Fey March bosses. Mom Bomb at Leviathan, very annoying fight. And the Maga Sisters at Asura, also something that we are not ready to deal with quite yet. Although Tingle Nader is healing up, I wonder if he's planning on trying one of these bosses. Both of them are going to be very rude at this point. Yeah, he's going into that Mom Bomb fight. I wonder if he has illusions. Or a Moon Veil would also be great here, but oof, these punches Ow. are going to come fast and furious. And, you know, the illusions will get you through the first half. And then once we get to the explosion part with this team's HP, they can survive that. You can then throw an hourglass to freeze all the baby bombs in place and pick them off one at a time. Uh, the problem, though, is this location has a ridiculous amount of HP. So Tingle Nader has to hope for a big payoff here because this is going to be a massive time commitment. Yeah, absolutely. Especially with only three characters. And I don't, it doesn't look like he has any way to berserk his team. Um, he probably wouldn't want to anyway, since he wouldn't then have a way to reapply the uh, blink status. Um, so yeah, this is, this is going to be a pretty long fight to get through. Yeah, and I pulled up the stats just out of the, just to sate my curiosity. And the mom bomb here, if you wanted to to beat it without it exploding, you'd have to do thirty two thousand four hundred damage to it. Uh, wow. If it does explode, the bombs will have fourteen hundred HP apiece, and the gray bombs will have twenty eight hundred HP apiece. Uh, Ooh. And that Sid is down. Could not keep the illusions up fast enough. Meanwhile, on Dia's screen, I saw, uh, besides the elements, it looks like there were the dolls uh, kind of in their French vanilla location in the Golbez spot there. And we're about to see what key item he's about to get from the King of the Dwarves. Looks like that was a protector ring. So again, not progression, but that is a very nice um, item to pay as protective item. Yeah, the two, the two, you know, high rarity rings are the Protect Ring and the Crystal Ring. Uh, the Protect Ring gives a big vitality boost, gives you resistance to fire, ice, and lightning, and also just has really great defenses in general, both physical and magical. So not a bad pickup, but you usually hope for a little more value if you're dealing with the two boss fights and the associated cutscenes in Dwarf Castle. I missed what character Dia got up there. Did you happen to see in Venerable who he picked up there? I did not, but Paranoia is going to give us a re instant replay pretty much. It is another Yang. I see. Okay, so we've got even more beefiness to this already beefy party. <laughs> Where are all the mages this seed? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah, it would be nice to see uh, any kind of white mage, <laughs> any kind of black mage who could do AoE damage, pretty much any kind of mage at all. Um, I think they'd even be happy to see Tella at this point because that would open up uh, some additional grinding uh, options for them once they find a way to the moon. Oh, yeah. And Paranoia not getting as lucky. Paranoia and Dia both used a Grimoire item in this fight, which calls a random summon from pretty much the entire pool. There may be a couple that are excluded. Uh, Dia got the Mist Dragon, which although it doesn't do a lot of damage, it's, eight, it's HP based, is definitely enough to clear all six dolls. Paranoia got the single target Sylph and actually has to, to beat the other five into, uh, into shreds. Yeah, kind of unfortunate that Grimoire uh, can be pretty hit or miss. You can get uh, something really nice, uh, like a Leviathan or a Bahamut from it, or you could get a Chocobo. So it's all in the RNG. <laughs> Looks like we've got a little bit of an overlap. Um, Diaz down in the Fame March has picked up that Bahamut summon that we saw down there. Um, Paradoy is finishing up this dwarf castle, and then we've got some shopping percent going on with Lafaz and Tingle Nader. So we'll see where our runners decide to go from here. Uh, as far as free ish checks go, we still have Sheila one. They could go down into the Fame March, and uh, I'm sorry, not Fame March, but Sylph Cave, and uh, talk to Yang, and then go talk to Sheila to get a, a free item from her. Um, and then from there, they're going to have to decide which of the two towers they're going to want to go to. Uh, well, it looks like Dia is taking his hobbits to Isengard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
you know, you set that up. I couldn't resist. Uh, making the single tower dip. Uh, this is actually not a bad check. You know, it seems like you have to walk a long way. But the nice thing is that once you get to the top and you beat the boss, if you don't like your item, save yourself the walk. Reset back out. You're fine. Uh, so, I... I don't hate this play. It's a pretty good one. We've seen a lot of it in these leagues. Uh, and it's a boss fight that gives a lot of XP without being uh, really that rude. Yeah, absolutely. And meanwhile, LaFaz is going up the Tower of Zot. Uh, so we've got double tower play going on here on the left side of our screen. We will see uh, which, if either one of them leads to progression for us. Yeah. You know, you mentioned earlier some people were doing shopping percent, and there's a lot of handy gear available in these underworld shops. Uh, I noticed that the shop in Tamra has both ice brands and blizzard spears. Uh, I mean, yes, we have a white lance, but if you really, if you find other cecils and canes and don't have any good weaponry, that's about the best you're going to be able to buy. The uh, the Dwarf Castle shop had a Thunderclaw, which I love the Thunderclaw. It is actually my favorite Yang Claw, just because of how many enemies have lightning weaknesses. Uh, and also, uh, Mute Knives and Elven Bows, which gives both Kane and Sid anti-mage weaponry for those Maga sisters. So the shops underground have some really great tools if you're really desperate for something that takes that weakness. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, also just to point out, I know Scala mentioned it in chat, but also just to reiterate, um, LaFaz was having some internet uh, connection problems earlier. So if we're seeing some uh, dropped frames uh, or some bumps on his side, uh, that's probably why he is still streaming, uh, but his connection was was not great. So we do apologize for that. He's I know he's streaming as best he can. Yeah, I think he's making do with a mobile hotspot. So shout out to him for finding a way to make it work. Uh, he didn't ask everyone else to reschedule. So huge shout out to LaVaz for making it happen and uh, giving us some new information this race. Okay, not so first bo boss up here in Tower of Zod. Uh, and it looks like he was hitting it with an ice weapon on his cane, doing very nice damage. Dia, meanwhile, has found Valvolus at... This is kind of a... <laughs> This is a very annoying spot to find her. It's good that he has a cane, but this spot has no magic resistance or evade while in tornado form. If you had any black mage, you'd be having a great time here. But instead, he actually has to break the tornado if he wants to do full damage, and that means she punches more. Yeah, that, that uh, Valvalis, uh, it almost would have behooved them more to come down through the hook route so that they could have seen that uh, on their way down and then known to avoid this spot because she is such a pain in this spot. This spot and the uh, first Baron Inn fight are among her most notoriously difficult locations, I think. Yeah, she gets four physical evade multipliers here to the tune of 90% uh, effectiveness. Uh, if I'm reading, again, my charts correctly here. So if you have five physical attack multipliers, well, you're still guaranteed to do a little bit of damage, but just not a lot at these kind of like, I believe Dia's at the high 20s, low 30s. Uh, so definitely having to jump and take this, you know, slowly but surely. And look, hey, we found a mage at the top of Tower of Zod. It's Porum. Yay, Porum. And another Sid. <laughs> 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 uh, so this is sort of uh, sort of reject percent but along with Yang who's not quite reject he's kind of borderline like just kind of there and then also one cane who's definitely not reject but he's you know <laughs> he's carrying everybody else <laughs> oh Goodness, and I just missed it. What did Paranoia get from Sheila 1? Uh, I believe our tracker may have us covered on this, Gambit. I don't, yeah, I, I missed it too because I was concentrating on that forum <laughs> and this Val, this Valvalis fight that is going a little bit sideways for Dia. Hopefully he'll be able to recover from this. Yeah, I'm looking closely at, at chat to see if anyone saw that. Uh... T -t -t Oh, it's the Baron key. Okay, cool. I got it on the, uh, you know, I love the clip button as kind of an instant replay feature. So yes. apparently it just got the Baron key, uh, which we know there's a free boss in the Bygan spot uh, for those of us who, you know, 
paid close attention at the start, which I nearly never do unless I'm actually on commentary. Uh, it's usually a surprise when I finally get a Baron <laughs> key. Uh, and uh, yeah, there'll be another character in here. There's two boss fights to give one key item and then the Odin's fight, kind of rude usually, to give another potential key item. Oh, uh, and Paranoia is gonna go for it. Yeah, following that up immediately. This is a, uh, I, you know, a good play. Uh, the two key items definitely make this worthwhile because it's uh, maybe a little bit shorter than Tower of Zod, but then the, with the two key items, it makes it a lot more worthwhile. Those are also a lot of chests in here if he does decide uh, to loot the treasury that's inside Baron Castle after he takes out the bosses. Oh, yeah. There's, I mean, just in the waterway alone, there are eight chests, some of them closer together than others. There's the treasury with three tre chests, the, the treasury with six chests. And then the tower with like eight more. So if you are st feeling still under geared, great place to visit. Dia still making his way sh slowly but surely through this Velvellus fight. Um, it's a good thing that he's got a large stack of life potions available uh, because it looks like he's gone through several of them. Um, hopefully he's going to be able to take her down and hopefully it's going to be something worthwhile uh, for this time investment that he's putting into this. Yeah, it is nice uh, to have a full team of five, have enough life potions. You can win a lot of fights in this game just through sheer attrition. Oh, Lafaz only getting rewarded with a spoon from Zot. It is a key item. If we hit 10 key items, we do get... Oh, oh Dia with the Stardust Rod. It is the oh, reset no. after all that time invested. <laughs> it's it's uh, such a great item, but he doesn't even have anybody to equip it. I know. Okay. I, I, we're seeing the cruelty that I've come to expect from Hummingway Open Seats starting to take form here. I'm digging it. Uh, so, spoon for Lafaz and a Porum. Lafaz is the only one of our racers with a white mage, even if it's poor. Uh, he stopped this spot at the top of the tower behind a lengthy Valvolus fight. Uh, so it's either going to be behind Fey March bosses at this point, or at this Baron Castle, and Paranoia is looking to be on the right track. There could be something at the top of Mount Ordeals. I don't think anybody has made that play like play yet. <laughs> What's ordeals? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> who, I, who always, there? <laughs> I always forget ordeals if I don't see a Cecil, Tella, or Fu. We'll see if our racers remember that it's a thing. Yeah, <laughs> ex exactly. Uh, so, so yes, uh, Paranoia is going to be showing quickly. Uh, he just got through this second boss fight. It looks like Plague was waiting on the throne of uh, Baron Castle, trying to, to take over the uh, the castle here. Uh, so we're going to see momentarily the both the character and the key item that is awaiting us here. Yeah. Excellent new information here. Let's see what Paranoia gets. Well, first, who he gets, I suppose. This is actually kind of a spicy find. We have a Bahamut summon that we got from the free Fey March chest. Uh, Paranoia doesn't know it, but if he ends up doing Tower, he'll also get a Stardust Rod. Uh, you weren't joking about kind of reject percent, though. We do have kind of the overall weaker Black Mage and White Mage, but we definitely have the tools to make Rydia a force to be reckoned with in this seed. That summon, that Stardust Rod, she will be doing work, even if her uh, HP total is a little lower than you'd like. Imagine if this is a darkness crystal and we find either a Fusoya or a Tella on top of the moon. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, then we could... <laughs> oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're... I mean, we found neither half of the crystal. At this point, it's becoming very likely we will have to go to the moon to find part of it. Oh, yeah. And I was going to say, if we do find darkness crystal and either Fu or Tella, we could do a uh, slingshot for that Rydia. We do find the pass here in Baron Castle, so that kind of makes up for the time spent in itself. Uh, of course, after we we have to come wherever we find both halves of the crystal. We have to forge it at Kakol's smithy. After we forge it, well, you can either walk the moon, or if you have the pass, you can take the shortcut in the Troya Cafe. Uh, so this uh, will save Paranoia that final lunar walk at minimum. Uh, very nice pickup. 
Yeah, it's not often at all that we see runners skip the moon entirely. Um, usually darkness is required in some capacity, but it does happen occasionally. So finding this pass uh, at the very least is going to make the trip to Zeromus quicker and possibly eliminate the moon entirely. I don't think it's going to happen at this point since I, I think with all the checks that we've made, there is going to be something on the moon that's required. But it is possible in some seeds that you can skip the moon entirely if you find the pass and both halves of the crystal on earth and we do have pain man at the odin spot this is a pretty rough spot for it it can do up to 633 damage per dark wave uh and paranoia is throwing these cure twos fast and furious to make sure one of his characters survives three waves and he definitely got enough off his yang is going to live uh Good job with that chemistry. <laughs> and let's see what Paranoia gets rewarded with here. Yeah, very nice. Uh, didn't have to do any kind of agility manipulation. Sometimes that's necessary to manipulate your agility or move your characters around so that they go in a particular order so that the one with the highest hit points survives. So uh, just very nicely played on Paranoia's part there. We find the Luca key, which is going to open up the sealed cave in the underground. Um, that's a long check, but it's nice because you see the key item before you actually have to fight the boss. So if you don't like it, if it's trash or if it's something that you don't need, um, you can just reset right out of it. So, you know, you said you were hoping we'd finally get a hidden mist dragon in one of these seeds. I kind of want a mist dragon to be in plain sight. I kind of want the mist dragon to be the sealed cave boss, but I want that item to be a glass hat, a drain spear, a ninja shirt, something that will make most racers just reflexively reset out. Uh, and I want that mist dragon to be the boss there. That I would love. Yeah, uh, it looks like, is that where is that where Paranoia is going? Well, he's going down to the underground. It looks like he's gonna do a grind, but uh, maybe with Luca or Sealed Cave in mind. Um, yeah, that's definitely bitten some racers uh, <laughs> before where, you know, that Sealed Cave item is, is just junk and they reset out of it, but then that Mist Dragon happens to be the boss and Mist Dragon is what holds the key to progression and they don't check it and then they end up uh, scouring the world and uh, not finding what they need until they realize that it's a Mist Dragon hunt and then having to go all the way back through Sealed Cave to find their Mist Dragon and the item that they missed originally and by the way we are seeing a very minor slingshot here with this pink Rydia. uh of course being 10 levels behind the party median she gets triple xp which means this one egg gives her 26 levels and i think she's still far enough behind to get another double xp from the next one so she's getting online very quickly here uh she'll still have Rydia hp but she's gonna be able to throw dragon lord after dragon lord at her enemies once this grind is done for paranoia yeah, that Bahamut summon is going to do, is absolutely going to work. We said before that they didn't have any way of doing AoE damage. Well, <laughs> they've got AoE damage now. And whoa, did the stream just get extra psychedelic for, for you, Maggie? Yes, yes it did. We've got some pretty colors going on now. The uh, Vaporwave theme was not enough for Scala Kitty. Now she's going full psychedelic on us. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I think that, that that huge Zemus that we saw last night is kind of trying to take over. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It looks like it's cleaning up a little bit. Paranoia is headed over to Sealed Cave now. Tingle Nader has gotten his ready, is about to pick up a pass as well. And then as soon as I get a look at Dia and LaFaz, we'll know what their, uh, what their situation is. Okay. Lafaz is about to enter Baron as well. Does have a white mage, same as Dia. They both cleared Zot and picked up the Purim. So I do really like that Paranoia uh, kind of faded Tower of Zot. It may hurt him if he doesn't find a white mage, but you know, I, I kind of hope that it, it pays off for a racer tonight since it, it didn't quite pay off yesterday afternoon. So I'm uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stand a little bit. I'm gonna stand a paranoia just for a uh, just for a little bit this race. You know, if they happen to find an Ashura summon and uh, with paranoia having that Rydia, uh, you could see some Rydia healing going on potentially. 
That is true. Uh, Asura, the summon will give you a party full life one spell one third of the time, a party full quote unquote cure three spell a third of the time, and a quote unquote party cure four spell uh, a third of the time. However, really with how high her magic power is, that cure three and cure four face, they're just full heals. They're just full heals. And they go through reflect status. So Asura, very, very potent uh, means of healing if you, uh, as long as you aren't too unlucky. Yeah, it's a little bit of a hit or miss with that life one being thrown in there. And if uh, if you don't need that, sometimes that can be really useful if like half your party's down, but if you don't need that life one and you repeatedly get life one three times in a row when you don't need it, well, uh, but again, uh, that's the, that's just the nature of RNG. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, it's a very fast summon and the rest of our team will have tons of HP. So if Rydia falls in battle, not too hard to throw a life potion on her and let her summon it with her very next action. You still get your team fighting fit. So it's uh, it's not bad at all. The main thing again is just getting her HP to the point where she survives big bangs anyway. Yeah, she, and along with that Purim, uh one of the main reasons that both of them are considered the rejects of this game is because of their HP growth. Uh, they have among the worst HP. Uh, it's probably second only to Edward. Oh, and look, there's half of our crystal. Yeah, so no one's going to be fading this boss. We do have to fight uh, fight it to get out. And honestly, our, our racers are strangely... Well, okay, Asura is going to be a little bit of a jerk here, but they all have means for dealing with her. You can double Star Veil to make her reflect her own magic back. Uh, she doesn't punch too hard in this spot, but we have illusions if we want them to uh, to deal with her counter melees. But this won't be too bad for anyone. But they're all kind of fortunate because we got the Bahamut summon in Fey March, and to get the Luka Key, we had to find a we had to go past Baron, which had Aridia, and the Bahamut summon kind of screams hey, take Rydia with you. And so now we actually have someone who can cast Warp, so you don't have to walk back through every single room on the way out of here. You can't exit, but you can Warp in the longer rooms to shave off those seconds. Absolutely. We'll see how many of our runners um, decide to follow up on this Luka key immediately. It's not a super popular check, but considering everything that they have left to them, nobody seems to be in a hurry to be going to ordeals before it, so. Yeah. Uh, Paranoia doing really good work here. That uh, His top Sid has that Elven Bow equipped and is doing quadruple damage to the tune of over 2,000. His Rydia is doing over 5,000 with the uh, the Bahamut summon. He is tearing through this fight. I wonder if Dia is going to regret throwing away that uh, Stardust Rod once he sees his summoner. This does, however, beg the question of where progression is, because we still have not found the Darkness Crystal. And so, um, what I don't think anybody's done the Fame March bosses yet, have they? No, they've not. And Bahamut definitely makes Magus sisters a lot easier. They may wall themselves. Bahamut don't care. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The, <absolutely>. the, <laughs> the mom bomb fight. Not bad. <laughs> yeah. The mom bomb fight is will be a little tricky, but if you can get uh, an illusion up on Rydia and keep it there, you'll probably be okay. Uh, the main thing is that Mom Bomb will one punch Rydia, probably even if she's wearing the protect ring and in the back row. Uh, so Mom Bomb a little trickier, but the the Maga Sisters will not stand up against Rydia, not at this point. Yeah, so I think that there are the three checks left uh, that we haven't seen: the two Fame March bosses and Motor Deals. Uh, so Darkness Crystal is guaranteed to be behind one of them or behind a chain that starts from one of them. So like it, it could be something like a rat tail and a hook that leads into Darkness Crystal. Uh, but Darkness Crystal is guaranteed to be among those earth checks. Yeah, we don't have an awful lot of rabbit holes left. Uh, there is a tower key that can still take us there. Uh, pan, hook, and tails are all kind of rabbit holes, but they're all very quick. You don't have to fight a single boss to check those once you have the tools to do them. Uh, the main things that would take excess time are the twin harp for the uh, the cave magnus dive, and of course the darkness crystal for all those lunar vet boss options. 
Yeah, and there is still the possibility that the Legend Sword would be just behind one of those checks on its own, because if Legend Sword was available and then Darkness was available and everything else was on the moon, that is a possibility. So that possibility that the moon is completely empty is still out there. Um, I think unlikely, but it's still a possibility. Yep. Paranoia, now the next one of our racers to have to make a decision. And it looks like he's ready to tackle those Fey March bosses. Uh, that Bahamut again is going to do great work on the Maga Sisters. As long as Rydia, as long as you don't get unlucky and your Rydia eats that initial counter spell, uh, Asura has very high. The Asura location has very high spell power. So these reflected tier two spells and viruses from the Maga Sisters will hurt real bad. Yeah, so they're going to want to take down the middle sister as quickly as possible, since she's the one who kind of controls the fight. Um, if they take down either of the other two sisters, the middle one is going to revive the other two. Um, and then they also use the middle one to bounce reflected spells off of. So once she's down, the rest of the fight goes down pretty quickly. However, she also has, what is it, twice as many hit points as uh, the other two? You know, I'm glad you asked that. Let's go to the spreadsheet. Uh, <laughs> at that location, Sandy, the tall one, has about 6,400 HP. Cindy, the middle one, has about 11,000 HP. And Mindy in the front has about 5,600. So yeah, roughly double, give or take a few hundreds. Okay, okay, yeah. So uh, a couple of Bahamuts will take her down, and then uh, if they do keep the um, the Mage Killer set up on uh, one of the SIDs there, uh, like probably, t I would say, what, t two Bahamuts and maybe one or two arrows is going to be plenty to take her down. Oh, yeah. Yeah, two Bahamuts definitely cleans up both front and back sister, and those those arrows were doing work against Asura. No reason they won't against the Maga sisters. That Fire 2 not doing too much work against Sid, but I'm pretty sure he is wearing at least one piece of gear that halves uh, elemental damage. If we see one of these hit uh, Yang, it'll probably do quite a bit more, unless he has the Protect Ring. I've not paid exactly full detailed uh, attention to which character has which piece of gear on. Yeah, Dragoon gear. Um, oh, there we go. The... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what was that, 1,500 damage against Yang? <laughs> yeah, with a Lightning, too. Yeah, it, it, it can get rough here, especially if they get to the virus part of the script. Ooh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what gear Rydia has on. If she has something like a, uh, a, a diamond armlet, she could be protected from the lightning damage, but um, that's not going to help against the, the virus or anything else. Yeah. Hopefully they uh, paranoia put that protect ring on her. But, uh, well, it may not matter because uh, that was some heckin' good DPS. Well done by paranoia. Uh, I think Mom Bomb will be a little harsher then. Rewarded with a life staff. That's a really nice stat stick for a white mage. Um, if uh, Paranoia finds that forum, um, she's going to really benefit from that. Uh, unfortunately, right now, he doesn't have anybody who can use it. And based on these Cure 2s, it looks like Paranoia is opting not to go back to the save point, deciding I don't really care about the life staff. But I think the bigger concern that Paranoia should be looking at here is what is remaining MP are on Aridia, because Bahamut's mighty, but oh, it, it chews through your magic points. <laughs> and Mom yep. Bomb knows who the threat <laughs> is, goes right, <laughs> Mom Bomb, stay away from the summoner. Meanwhile, we're seeing some, uh, just some cleanup on the other sides of our, from the, our other runners. Looks like Dia is diving into the sealed cave. Uh, Lafaz is doing the uh, single dip tower. Um, going to find that very rude Valvalis and the Stardust Rod if he does manage to complete this. You know what I just saw in Paranoia's in inventory that I would be popping as soon as I could? Moonvale? Does he have a Moonvale? Moon Moonvale on Iridia. This, oh, yeah. if, if any fight, this is the fight, I think, that I, I, I 
take that moon veil and I put it on the squishiest character on my team. You know, Has I think... he even had a chance to, to get a turn with her? He got, <laughs> look, look at that mom bomb. <laughs> I think he got one action, but I don't think whatever she had uh, queued up went off. Uh, this is definitely a spot where a silk web would probably be handy, just to give you a few extra ticks to get your turns in, turning battle speed down to three or four even, just to make sure you're getting maximum turn efficiency, because this is a very fast spot, and the computer, it doesn't hesitate. It, it doesn't be like, oh, you know, let me have a split second to get into my mint. No, it will hit you. Uh, and I see that stack of Silkweb's paranoia, and I see that Moon Veil. Hopping to go for the illusions. Um, at least Mom Bomb hit somebody besides Rydia to start. That's true. That's true. Definitely. Uh, and then punching Young. Yeah, who can actually tank a full hit in the front. So this one looks like it's going a lot better for Paranoia. Of course, this fight can go south very quickly. Uh, it's kind of neat, though. You know, I back in the day, I'm sure I'm not the only one playing all the vanilla Final Fantasies and RPGs, you get your elixirs and your mega elixirs, and it's like, oh, I shouldn't use it. What if there's a harder boss? <laughs> yep. Moonvale is that item in Free Enterprise. Moonvale yeah. is the one that you will end up going all the way to Zeromus with when... Burn it if you got it. Moonvale, of course, uh, grants the reflect status, so it will protect you from uh, spells that are cast on you, but it also grants the barrier status, which will protect you from all physical attacks. So all Mom Bomb is going to do is hit you, and it's going to hit you really fast and really hard, as we've seen repeatedly here, uh, but that barrier status that Moonvale grants uh, is going to completely negate all of those attacks, and it lasts for a really, really long time. It would easily last this whole fight yeah i think that we've never i mean there's still debate in the community like uh our great community member uh swimmy leone thinks vaguely at one time like a year ago he saw a barrier expire but since then never seen it not happened uh so eh, maybe it's a maybe it doesn't have an expiration date and it's one of the very few items, maybe the only item, I'm not sure, that is not available to purchase on these flag sets. It is a uh, J item, and J items are available in shops, but it's so rare uh, that with these flag sets, you can't find it in a shop. So when runners do find it, it's going to be out of a chest, and as you said, uh, they're usually going to hoard it for some really hard fight. Well, this is a pretty hard fight, so <laughs> yeah, this would be the time to use it yep and there drops ready it's kind of tricky because you want to jump with the cane here to get the bonus damage but if he's in the air he's also not taking hits but mom bomb has inflated that means we are at the explosion phase so all paranoia has to do here is either get off a swift bahamut or throw an hourglass and freeze the bombs in place and he has kept the moon veil i want to see someone use a moon veil so bad it is a very fun item to use, and when you use it, you, you just feel like, oh, I've I've just totally cheesed this fight. <laughs> Did get the hourglass off, of course. Uh, the bombs uh, get their first attack queued up even before you get a chance to use your item, so we're going to see them hit here. Uh, he's used a kamikaze with his Sid. I hope that his Yang survives here. Oh. It looks like all the bombs have gone. Oh my goodness. Paranoia given us all a heart attack. That could have been... So can you imagine if the kamikaze goes off and then Yang gets punched to death? Like, I would just go ordeals at that point. I would just uh, yeah. I would just walk away. Just, just That's fine. That's fine. Keep your treasure. No, you can't... Oh, that would be so nasty, but... Paranoia is making it through. These bombs are frozen. Everything's f all is well. All is well. Tinglenator is catching up to him. I'm not sure if Tinglenator did use that Moon Veil, if he had found it as well, but he's caught up pretty quickly in this fight. Of course, I don't think he took the wipe that Paranoia did, but he, we see him almost neck and neck now with Paranoia. They're both finishing up this fight at the same time here. Yeah, it looked like it was partially based on turn order, partially on having a few extra levels. And that is just a hook, which in itself... <laughs> so this means one of two things. <laughs> I love it. Uh, either progress progression is on ordeals, or, and this is my favorite option, there is a missed dragon at the King-Queen-Eblin fight. 
that would be that would be spicy and fun. That would be very fun. <laughs> uh, paranoia. That, I, <laughs> Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I was, all I was going to say is I would take that in lieu of a Mr. Dragon in uh, a Giant of Battle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it does give another character option. So for those of our racers who've not done Zot but want to take a quick character check, you can do that. Uh, I like Paranoia doing this lower Babel check. One, uh, he's going to have a very easy time with Valvolus, uh having uh, his Rydia online. Two, this lets him at least see who the fight is at the Rubicante spot. Uh, knowing this, if it if it is a Mist Dragon, which we know it's not, Dia's already been there. But if it were, Paranoia would know. Let me go, Cave Evelyn, right now. Go get that Mist Dragon. Uh, as it stands, though, Stardust Rod not bad. May still reset back to the bottom of the tower if he feels his Rydia is good enough. Yeah, so it looks like we're going to be seeing a little bit of overlap here. Uh, Tingle Leader is going to be taking out these Mega Sisters, going to get the Life Staff from them. Paranoia doing the Tower Check. Uh, Lafaz getting the Adamant from the Sealed Cave. And then Dia going down into the Fame March and going to be cleaning up the bosses that we know are down here. Quick shout out to Lore Master Motos, gifting the five bomb to viewers of the Free Enterprise channel. Uh, thank you so much for supporting Free Enterprise. Of course, your uh, your subs on the channel not only give you great Free Enterprise themed emotes, they also help support uh, hosting the actual site where we actually <laughs> go and get our uh, where we actually get to go get our seeds and race and have fun. So, thanks for supporting the community, Motos. You're great. Yeah, and just another, while we're seeing some of these uh, overlaps here, just another shout out to our Restream team, uh, Scala Kitty on Restream tonight and Gambit on tracking. Um, thank you both so much for all of your help. And of course, thank you to all of our volunteers who have helped with both the League and the Hopin. Um, we wouldn't be able to bring these races to you um, and, and uh, have such great events without all of our wonderful volunteers and all of our viewers and runners who make these uh, these shows possible. So thank you all for tuning in and being part of such an amazing community. Best randomizer community in the game, 100%. And Paranoia, by the way, must not be aware of the fact that uh, you can hit Valvolus with magic here, still opting to break her spin, which, I mean, will give you a little bonus damage with your other fighters. Okay. If he wasn't sure, he'll be sure now. He will see this Bahamut do full damage. So that's good. Uh, it's kind of, you really have to balance your team's needs with the Valvolus situation. If she stays in tornado form, she alternates with a weak and a ray, same action. It's a chained action, weak and ray, and then a punch on her next turn. Uh, if you're doing breaking her spin, well, when she breaks the spin, she gets an extra free punch. And then she gets one and then she goes back into spin. So you actually are eating more punches when you're breaking her spin than when you leave her in tornado form. Which if you have enough illusions or blink casters, eh, no big deal. And through that Val fight much quicker than when we saw the last attempt by one of our runners, which Dia killed it, did a great job that fight, but just with the team and the situation, Val is rude up here, very rude. Uh, Paranoia sees that Stardust Staff and takes a second longer before choosing to take the reset. I think our racers all have charm rods from uh, the Troya treasury, which gives you plus 10 to your black magic stat. The Stardust Rod gives you plus 15. I don't think I'm taking that walk for just a five point bump either. Yeah, definitely. It's the Stardust Rod is much more useful when it's found early in the game because it can be used as an item to cast the Comet spell, uh, which is great early game when you're on the overworld doing those early checks. Um, it can really easily clear 
uh, some of those early overworld checks. But at this point in the game, um, it's it's still great for the stats, but not so much for that um, for the actual item usage. And if they already have an item like the charm rod, it's it's less useful. Uh, Zot has been checked, Vilas, and at this point, Paranoia is actually kind of sacrificing whatever lead he may have accrued. Uh, he he for he chose to forego Zot earlier, and he will get on that way with us with a White Mage. He will clear these bosses very quickly with his Bahamut summon. Uh, but you know, this is definitely giving time back to the other three racers. He did unfortunately reset, or I think he took a wipe to Mom Bomb after he got the life staff from the Magus sisters. So he he he's gonna get his white mage, but he's not gonna have his life staff for her once he clears this. <laughs> We've seen a Stardust Rod and a life staff, and Paranoia has earned them both, and then reset back to before both of them. <laughs> uh, yes. it, it's kind of funny. You, you hate to see it, but it's also kind of humorous. Uh, at the end of the interview, we will be like, Paranoia, what do you have against equipment? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't want no mage gear. Get out of here. This was supposed to be a bruiser party. We start. We started off with Yang and a Sid, and we found two more Sids and another Yang, and we have a cane. I don't want these mages. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> we had Yang and Sid and Sid and Sid. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I kind of want to get like really silly uh, free enterprise party t-shirts printed up, you know, whereas the blank and blank and blank and bl it's just <laughs> uh, everyone can order your own favorite Cecil and Cecil and Cecil and <laughs> uh -oh. I think we're giving Scala Kitty ideas for her Etsy shop. Better be careful. Ooh. <laughs> look at look at that look. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So still no, we're an hour in and still everybody's just avoiding ordeals. It's like it's like everybody's got got something against ordeals. Like what what has everybody got against ordeals, Edvin? <laughs> I honestly think they may have forgotten. Like I there was there was a race <laughs> that I was doing commentary on. It was one of the league matches with uh it was one of I, I know it was one of Dusty Griffs. And whenever the other commentator and I kept going back and forth about places that were left, I left ordeals out every single time we listed it. They'd have to be like, you know, ordeals is like, what? So, <laughs> ordeals? What is this? <laughs> it would not surprise me if our racers were also just completely blanking on it. We've not seen a Cecil, a Tella, or a Foo. Well, even Foo at this point will come at full power. A Cecil or a Tella, instant reminder. Oh, yeah, that's a key item check. That's a, that's but, a thing. <laughs> But we're just not seeing them. I will laugh if someone does go and make a uh, a Miss Dragon at King Queen Evelyn check before going up ordeals. That that I uh, that would be really amusing and and uh, I, I would love to see it. I don't know that we're gonna see it. It looks like ah uh, uh, here we see, here we go. Tingle Leader is gonna show us the dream. Yeah, and Tingle Leader also. Oh oh wait wait. <laughs> wait. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? You teased. Wait. <laughs> Okay, okay. I don't know what just happened. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So we are about to have a lot of racers converging on ordeals. It's Paranoia's only remaining spot after dealing with this Dark Elf. Uh, I believe Lafaz and Dia are both done with Fey March, and it's their only option. Tinglenator, where where are you going, Tingle? <laughs> what? <laughs> He he can't make up his mind. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Watch him fly back there again. Go up to the top. Of the... No, no, I don't want to do it. <laughs> Wait, never mind. <laughs> He's going to get that hovercraft. <laughs> now I didn't see a Porum in Tingle Nader's party. Did he not do Zot yet, or did he just not take her? I don't know. I don't think he's done Zot yet. <laughs> okay, then checking here for a White Mage makes a decent bit of a decent bit of sense. Oh, that was, that was great, though. Back that was great, yeah. <laughs> uh, it looks like Dia is also making uh, Mist Dragon checks. Just checked the vanilla Mist Dragon spot and is now checking the um, water spot, which we know have already been checked. There's no Mist Dragon here. If there's a Mist Dragon, it's either on ordeals or a Mist Dragon that holds progression anyway. It's either on or in Eblen Cave. 
Dia here deciding where to check next. Also picking up the hovercraft. Curious. You know, I wonder at this point if maybe we're at the hour and six minute mark. It was a magma key seed. I wonder if our racers are thinking, if it's on ordeals, I'm host. I've lost this race. Surely someone went up ordeals and has access to whatever's behind that. Let me make the long shot play. They're, all, course, they're all psyching themselves out, yeah. yeah. Of course, we know everyone faded ordeals very reasonably. But just, just the fact that maybe everyone thinks, oh no, okay, if it's there, I've lost. Let's go do, let's go do the long shot first. And Dia, because... I love Dia is making that exact check that I described. Like, what if someone does? Like, Tinglenator doesn't have a white mage. I get that. Dia doing this is a little absurd, but I don't hate it. I was just about to ask because Dia has Porum, right? <laughs> yeah, Dia has Porum. So this is really, truly a, uh, a wild move. That's not a demist. <laughs> well, we knew that one wasn't. We saw the uh, the Baron Guards when we oh, went right, and right. Uh, fought Val. It's right, the right, King right. Queen Evelyn spot that's, that's the tricky one. Well, and a vanilla ninja. Um, I mean, that's more... That's more uh, melee if they have... I don't know what kind of ninja gear they have. I haven't been paying too close of attention what everybody's been keeping. There was a ninja blade in the Troya treasury, and I believe I've seen full moons in people's inventories. So that alone is a great... It, it's a sufficient endgame setup for Edge. Uh, it may not be perfect, but it's sufficient. Paranoia is going to show us what's on our deals. Here we have a, um, I think this is French vanilla Mylon Z. This is Mylon Z in the Mylon and Friends spot. Yep. The uh, nearly went into the tower, but uh, oh, wait, let me actually save out here where I can exit if it turns out that this spot doesn't give a, uh, a D mist. So smart check. Otherwise, you, uh, yeah, it's a long walk back out. But I'm very surprised to see this play. Maybe, okay, so Tinglenator, we know, has seen ordeals. So, I mean, started to go up ordeals and then came here. So Tinglenator clearly remembers ordeals. Dia doing this, maybe forgot ordeals was a thing, but Paranoia has found our our missing dragon. Uh, so this is not gonna pay off for Dia or Tinglenator. Yep, there's our D-Mist sitting up uh, on top of Mod Ordeals. So uh, progression is here one way or another. It's either at the D-Mist, D-Mist has it, or it's on the Mod Ordeals uh, vanilla, just whatever Mod Ordeals has. Mod Ordeals has progression though. I love Rydia being like, mom, look what I learned. Beating <laughs> <laughs> the Mist Dragon with a Bahamas something. <laughs> So this in turn has given Paranoia the lead again. I think we can we can give that to Paranoia. Dia sees the bad news, resetting. We'll head to ordeals next. But this uh, the balls in Paranoia's court. Uh, of course, the moon has a lot of different boss spots, a lot of different places that could have progression. It could be a situation where you have to get an item and bring it back to the blue planet. So uh, anyone, this is still anyone's ball game, but Paranoia definitely. Uh, it's his race to lose. Yep, and there's our Darkness Crystal. It was on Mount Ordeals, so they do have to actually complete the Mount Ordeals itself. Um, I was kind of wondering if it was if Mount Ordeals was going to be trashed and if they were just going to reset out after completing Demist and then go turn Demist in, but nope, it was actually on Mount Ordeals. And Mount Ordeals, the final boss here is Golbez. <laughs> Wonderful. <sighs> I, that's, that's great. It'll be really funny if... Uh... I mean, you know, it would be kind of funny if it, if D-Mist provides the Legend Sword, because we do have a pass. We don't actually have to go to the moon this scene. Right. Uh, <laughs> like, what if Golbez is actually just a waste of time? That'd be pretty fun. That would be... I would laugh. I would laugh. Uh, that, that would be... Yeah, that would be pretty amusing. Yeah. Um, yeah, Golbez here... Uh, this. I mean, this is a pretty mundane spot for him he's not really dangerous but it's just so annoying this spot has like a thousand hit points and he's gonna go through his whole 
dialogue is going to kill half your party. Uh, it's just it's just so annoying. Yeah. Well, and, and the best part, too, is that the crystal room gives you a full heal upon entering and upon exiting. So you can't, even if you knew he was here, you can't, you know, piggy your party to avoid the paralysis. You, you, there's nothing you can do to keep that dragon from eating everyone, short of having adamant armors and ribbons on everyone. You're going through the script, whether you like it or not. Yep, mm -hmm. and and we see him, uh, we see his cane one shot Golbez once he actually gets a turn, but it took, you know, what was that, 90 seconds or two minutes to actually get into the fight. <laughs> it's, a, it's a beautiful, beautiful troll. Uh, the, the next question, though, is how many of our racers are going to be so excited to see Darkness Crystal that they forget about Mist Dragon, and then Mist Dragon ends up being required? Because I... I have totally forgotten a Mist Dragon on top of Ordeals just because of how, like, you know, you have the 90 second Golbez fight to get you nice and irritated. You have, you know, that Darkness Crystal sitting there. It, it's very easy, especially an hour, 12 minutes in, for all of a sudden it to just slip out of your brain. I just think it's amusing that every single one of our runners, and we saw all this divergence in the underground and all these checks, and now they're all on modern deals <laughs> all at the same time at an hour and 12 minutes in. Well, the best part is I guarantee you every single one of these racers feels really far behind. Every one of them is going to think someone, someone did ordeals early. And thus every one of them is going to be in full on panic mode right now. And I yeah. love it. Yep, it's it's like the music from last night's harp was the panic music, and that's what they're all feeling right now. Yeah. <laughs> and paranoia, paranoia. gonna go. Yeah, gonna go turn that demon in. Yeah, definitely not overlooking it. Well, oh, there's actually, uh, I believe it's Big Dunka's tracker that a lot of people use, and it has a spot where you can mark off demon after you've beaten it. So if you're using that tracker, very hard to forget. And paranoia has a big choice to make. Ooh. You gonna go for Ooh, quantity on moon, or are you going to please the crowd and give us that new Twin Heart music? We'll see what all of our runners decide to do if they all remember to turn this D-Mist in and get their harp. Um, maybe we'll see some divergence. It looks like Paranoia is going to go straight for Darkness. I think that this is probably the... Um, I don't know if smarter is the right word or the word I'm looking for. This this has got the, the obviously the more checks because there's, like we said earlier, seven checks up here on the moon. They're all more clustered together as opposed to one long check that Harp is going to provide. Yep. Uh, and don't worry, chat. Uh, we are not running the Hummingway Open Finals on delay. And so this means that whenever we do have a finisher, if it turns out that music was not required, we will ask that person via PM on Discord uh, to go ahead, head on back. Everyone has the pass. They'll be right there. We'll ask them to go get music queued up uh, for once the action dies down. We'll get you your Twin Heart music. Make sure you stick around. There may be other surprises happening tonight anyway, so you really should. So yeah, this race has really tightened up. We Like we said, we saw a lot of divergence. Um, earlier uh, with everybody kind of going off in their own direction. And now everybody's going to be tightening back up. So this has really become a pretty exciting race with everybody, um, you know, getting this darkness crystal kind of all at the same time now. So we'll see what order they decide to do these moon checks and if they all decide to even go to the moon, um, you know, once they see that twin harp, if they pick that up. Also, uh, gonna make a quick shout out to uh, to our restreamer. Uh, I don't know who we have to talk to about getting your Moons Haunted FFC emote added to the channel along with the others, but uh, you know, the, if a seed ever deserved it, I mean, it may be happening tonight. If that Twin Harp has the Legend Sword and the Moon is nothing but red herrings and rabbit holes, it would be a great time to have that. Uh, talk to Rivers. Talk to Rivers. Who wants to talk to that guy? <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I don't talk to Rivers on Sundays and uh, that's NFL day baby <laughs> <laughs> we saw another cane up on the moon um, I didn't actually see if paranoia took him but we had a we had a moony dragoon sitting up there so just more beefiness to this already beefy party only two mages so far and Tinglenator, no matter what comes of this Twin Harp, choosing to be the people's champion, the champion of your hearts, 
headed to Cave Magnus. Well, we were about to find out if uh, music is the key tonight, as it was last night, or if um, Moon is going to hold our progression. Yeah, and Paranoia choosing to dive down to floor seven. Uh, this is the most dense part of the moon. You have the plague lo vanilla plague location with one item, uh, vanilla D lunar's location with two. Down just one floor is the Ogo Pogo spot with another one. And if you go up just a couple floors, there's the Wyvern spot with yet another. Uh, kind of the densest place with bosses and key items in the game. And so if it's down here, Paranoia is in great shape. If it's here in Cave Magnus, Tinglenator and Dia are going to be neck and neck. Yeah, going straight to that D-Lunar spot. Ooh, we find the Evil Wall. This is probably, this is going to be a pretty nasty fight. Well, we're also going to see an Insta reset. Paranoia never flipped his rose after that uh, back attack on Ordeals. And yeah, it's going to get hard enough there to, to where Rydia and Porom not going to have a good time. So quick reset, row swap, headed back in. Uh, but I'm going to mute myself so I can unmute the stream and hear this music. Uh, we'll be back with you in a moment, folks. Ooh, and that is Mog's theme from Final Fantasy VI. I didn't realize that had not been added to the pool yet. What a charming song and a great twin harp edition. That's a very nice rendition on harp as well. Uh, very, very nice. Um, we see lots of Mogs coming up on chat now. And of course, we, we all know how much Scala loves Mog, I think. So a very nice addition. Uh, we're gonna let you all listen to that here for about five seconds. And I will say we definitely have a disparity in the boss fights going on. Waterhag, one of the freest fights down here behind the music. Paranoia behind the music on twitch.tv slash free enterprise. Uh, and uh, Paranoia, <laughs> Evil Wall, very rude at any lunar spot, has wiped the full team except for Young. And just a package here. Uh, Tinglenator just resetting out, not going to bother seeing who this character is. I can't blame him. You have to rush to the moon, and you have to hope that you gamble correctly. Yeah, that's not even going to be progress. Uh, the, the only possibility that, that Package could have any kind of progress is if uh, D-Mist is at the Kaipo Guards location, and of course we already saw D-Mist, so uh, that's not going to have any kind of progression for them. So there is something up here on the moon that is going to hold their progression to the Legend Sword. I was just a little bit sad that it was um, the Water Hag here, because it's such a short fight, so you didn't get to hear the music any longer. <laughs> that's true, that's true. Uh, hey, Paranoia, do you still have that Moonveil kicking around your inventory? This would be another great time to use a Moonveil. Just, just saying that, buddy. <laughs> it would be. It would at least protect you for the first half of this fight until you... It, it doesn't protect against Crush, I assume, does it? No, it won't protect against Crush, but Crush is a much slower action than, yes. the, uh, than the instant punches. At the Crush phase, you can frequently win by attrition if you can get your life potions going quickly enough. Yes. Uh, and at this point, that looks to be what Paranoia is going to have to do anyway. Not getting any DPS in during this initial uh, part of the routine. Just throwing these life potions out and hoping to make it to the final phase of this fight. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, 
I might be looking for another fight at this point, <laughs> uh, looking for something a little bit easier and coming back after I get a few levels. Yeah, and chat pointing out that uh, apparently, apparently sold the Moon Veil. That's wow. That the bold move, Cotton. <laughs> uh, We'll Especially... have to watch his inventory because we tried we we tried to take chat's word earlier and look where that got us. So oh, I'm, true, I'm not true. I'm not saying the chat's wrong, but I'm not saying the chat's right either. We'll have to see once he opens his inventory if we actually see a Moonvale or not. Yeah, and yeah, uh, just generally with how squishy this team is, ooh, and the wall going straight for the character that Paranoia was trying to berserk. Gonna have to get back on this battle of attrition here. You may have to give up on Sid getting zero XP this run. You may just be like, you know, he has to stand up. I need the extra characters using life potions. Did his Purim get... Uh, oh yeah, his Purim is petrified, so that's bad too if he doesn't have a way to... Oh no, she's not. Okay, she's not fully petrified. Yeah, which is good. Uh, taking the time to heal with her, but you're down to three characters and you have no insta-death resistance. This is not looking so good for paranoia another uh, looking to be like we're gonna have another total party wipe at this evil wall fight and you do not want to lose that much time in this kind of race meanwhile dia is doing a gold dragon grind uh i think this is a really heads up play um He's got Artemis arrows, so this grind is going to go really quick. Also using the life glitch in order to get extra XP from this grind. So uh, this is going to get him some extra XP that's going to help him get through whatever these Lunar bosses are, uh, especially quickly. Yeah, and actually Paranoia is bringing this back, but D is going to be getting 180,000 per fight. Ooh, he did not... So this is a very tricky nuance with regard to arrows. Yeah, he had Artemis arrows. He is they are out now. Um uh, if Ooh. your turn comes up in the queue after you've been berserked, it will at that point register the arrow consumption and get rid of your final arrow. So if you're ever gonna be using Artemis arrows, you either need to one, make sure that you never rotate through the party to that character's turn. Uh, even though their menu won't pop up, it'll still consume the arrow. Uh, you need to have the character berserk themselves is the other option. Whether using Bacchus Wine, or if you are a Rosa or a Porum, cast Bursk on yourself. Those are the ways to avoid that arrow consumption, because that's really going to slow down Dia's grind. Still going to be great XP here, but it just won't be quite as fast as it could have been. Yeah, that can be, um, if you don't have a way to self-berserk the person like you were talking about, that can be kind of tricky to, to pull off. That's why I often like to put the Artemis arrows on Porum, uh, so she just self-berserks and kind of avoids that problem. Yeah. And speaking of Porum, 27 levels from the slingshot, 200,000 times three, 600,000, I believe. Uh, and he finds a pan and a, another LSD. Uh, it almost looked like a, I thought it was a ninja sword, really hard to see <laughs> with our vapor wave screen going on here. Um, but to, to me, it looked kind of like a ninja sword. Uh, chat saying it's legend. Scala Kitty confirming she does have the direct feeds. So that is go mode for paranoia. Ooh, ooh, Hell okay. on to complete that fight that time. It looked drastic for a while, but well, that puts paranoia in go mode. Uh, has the pass, gonna forge the crystal, but how are his levels? He might be thinking of doing an egg grind um, in the underground if he needs extra levels. <laughs> that is true, although you can get 180,000 from a gold dragon fight. Uh, if you have enough sirens, which we know they're for selling Baron, he looks like he's going there now, and you can get those eggs killed instantly, the 68,000 per egg will be slightly faster than the gold dragon fight. So heads up play to buy that stack. We're going to see how high he grinds and then he will be ready to show us a, uh, well, well, we'll ask that question when we get there. Yeah, I think we're a little bit early for it yet, but it's it's coming up. Um, meanwhile, we see both Dia and LaFaz in a um, Dr. Luge fight. I missed where this is, uh, somewhere in the lunar subterrain, but I missed which spot this is. I think they're both in Bahamut Lagoon, uh, which this play makes a lot of sense. You know that you found Darkness Crystal and 
Twin Harp in the literal last possible location. Uh, you then both checked, well, each of you knows, I checked music before going moon. Anyone who went moon and dove down to the bottom of the subterrain, I better make this Cave Bahamut check first and see what I get. Uh, of course, we know it's not going to pay off, but it, it's definitely a good meta thinking situation where if I have literally full cleared Earth, let me go to a less common spot on the moon first. Yeah, and Dr. Lugay, uh, not a very difficult boss. Um, pretty nice to see him here up on the moon instead of a more difficult boss. So uh, they're not going to have very much trouble getting through him, I don't think, especially with uh, Rydia throwing off those uh, Hamet summons. Uh, so we'll see if they get... Uh, hopefully this is not going to be a rabbit hole that's going to be sending them all the way back down to Earth. Well, one of the biggest rabbit holes uh, Paranoia actually found along with that Legend Sword. The pan was down at the... Uh... It's actually very fortunate for our runners that the pan and the Legend Sword are together there. Because if you find just the pan there, that's a massive temptation to go back to Earth and check it. It's two checks, no fights required to do either one of them. Uh, so just the fact that it's side by side definitely saves uh, a little bit of grief here. And can you imagine if behind the pan would be something like the Tower Key? Ooh. Oh, yeah. Uh, we have Tower Key and Rat Tail as our remaining uh, remaining rabbit holes that we could find. And, of course, decent chance they're gated by that pan. So uh, we probably won't see anyone going uh, too off, off the rails up here. <laughs> Paranoia, equipping your bow and arrows backwards. You, I, I, we've, we've spoken about this, young man. Uh, of course, <laughs> quadruple damage with arty arrows, even if you're not getting proper handed bonus, uh, still going to take care of these eggs pretty handily. We got an Excalibur from this Bahamut spot. Uh, we don't have anybody to equip it, but we do have an edge, um, at least on Dia's screen. It doesn't look like LaFaz took the edge, but Dia has an edge who can uh, dart it uh, if he so chooses, which will be pretty handy against that um, demon wall, evil wall, when he gets to that fight. Yeah, and I am glad that our final little bit of progression that we needed to go fight Saromas is behind such a cruel boss. It's always a little a little sad when you find it behind, you know, something that you can use an hourglass on behind a water hag. This is actually a really potent final, well, penultimate fight uh, for the seed. Kind of glad to see Evil Wall uh, blocking the way. Yeah, especially in a high stakes race like uh, the finale for a tournament like this. Gemini Hero asking in chat, why egg grinds and not King Ryu? Uh, as long as you can kill the egg on your first action, this is a slightly faster grind. Uh, King Ryu has the advantage if you have anyone who needs to catch up in levels, get slingshotted, if you're trying to do a fancy life two grind with them. Uh, but if you have the sirens, this is actually a very, very fast option. Yeah, a community member Simbu has actually gone in time to a whole lot of that, just seeing how fast you can do each one uh, if you're, you know, just going zoom, zoom, zoom. And uh, this one, actually, uh, ju it, it pretty much comes down to your menuing and how fortunate you are. But here, if you have your party arranged right and you're getting these one shots, so not like that one, uh, <laughs> it uh, very speedy. Yeah, and we see now uh, Tinglenator is in the uh, subterrain doing a gold dragon grind, and both Dia and LaFaz are right behind him. Looks like Dia is going immediately to the Pale Dim spot. Uh, we see the Karate Man here. And Paranoia, come again, coming very close to absolute ruin there. Uh, Getting a little punished there for having the bow and arrows backwards. That Rydia did not do nearly enough damage. He's run out of Artemis arrows. And the dragon nearly got revenge for all those omelets. Uh, still makes it away just fine, though. A little worse for the wear, but no, no problem here. 
Yeah, lost lost his Artemis arrow as as pointed out, but he's got plenty of other ways that he can um, defeat these dragons. Uh, he he did just learn weak on Rydia. Um He can. It looks like he's got the stone spell. Um, if he's got any coffins, he can use those. Yeah, there's there's more than one way to cook an egg. Yeah, we see Quake is one-shotting them. Um, it's even possible that, depending on what uh, levels and weapons both Yang and Kane have, they may be able to one-shot it as well. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure that that Yang with a with a power punch would do it. I'm pretty sure that uh, even Virus, given that uh, Paranoia is rocking that charm rod, should be enough. But choosing to be safe rather than sorry, we we saw what happens when you when you go a little risky there. So Quake, definitely getting the job done. Dia going to show us what the Karate Man was holding here. Uh, we get a defense sword, uh, another really good weapon for Kane or Cecil. Um, and also, uh, Dej can dart it if he decides to do that. Yep. Technically, and technically Kane's ultimate weapon until you hit around level 68. Uh, a little lower if you're putting Kane in the middle slot, but if you put Kane in the middle slot, uh, you may have a, a tricky time. He's very fast, and he'll slow down your party, and endgame monsters will still be super fast themselves. So, uh, but still, great weapon. Uh, don't know if Dia will take advantage of it. But Paranoia here has decided his grind is done. You know what that means, Maggie? Yeah, absolutely. We have a question that we need to ask uh, that uh, Chad is already chomping at the bit to ask. Whose butt are we going to kick tonight? <laughs> Hello, Scala. Hi. I love a good entrance. <laughs> uh, first of all, I did want to actually... I kind of mentioned it in chat, but uh, I am sorry for like the issue with the stream. I know exactly what caused it, and it's nothing I could fix unless everything gets reset. So thank you all for kind of like putting up with it. It's it's a problem with with Nvidia, and oh OBS. no, it, it, it's complex. It, it, it took me back to uh to the the seventies when I spent all that time following the Grateful Dead around the country. You yeah, weren't even old. alive. <laughs> 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 but um, anyway, um, we had uh, a lot of fun uh, with this sprite. Uh, there are some people I'm seeing in chat, some very particular admin, uh, who uh, definitely uh, kind of uh, swayed oh, my hand as to uh, what we're going to be fighting this evening. Oh, I know what this is gonna be. I, I'm, 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 I'm gonna have nightmares tonight, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> We're about to find out the big reveal. What are what are the true colors tonight? Y'all gotta fight the mascot. That's what y'all gotta do. <laughs> yep, that's what I. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that penetrating gaze. Oh my! <laughs> we have like to be sure to pools. ask. We have to ask all the runners what they think of this <laughs> when they finish. <laughs> so enjoy getting your revenge on Hummingway Open as a concept. <laughs> to be the humming most, you must kill the humming must. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Anyway, I will uh, let you all uh, get back to it and uh, finish calling this uh, absolutely amazing race. And thank you, everyone, who has uh, participated in and supported all of our new runners coming into the Hopin. Um, it's been really great to see uh, everyone learn and grow and just become better racers. And we're glad we get to top it off this way. So thank you all so much. I'm, uh, I'm loving Jazz's comment and just kill the wabbit, kill the wabbit, kill the wabbit. <laughs> <laughs> so paranoia being rewarded for keeping that Sid on the ground, just the old man sleeping through the entire race, uh, <laughs> giving him a great anchor here, because uh, of course, you know, Riddy and Poram not the fastest characters, so having a really slow character in the middle helps them keep up with the rest of the fight. Looks like he's going for a traditional hybrid strat. We got Berserking in the front, Holy and Nuke in the back. Uh, gonna be ripping this bunny to shreds. And uh, 
hopefully letting some people get a good night's sleep knowing that Humming Mist will be destroyed. Absolutely. And it looks like LaFaz uh, just turned his Adamant and Legend Sword in, so he's about to forge his crystal, and Tingle Nader is right behind, just picked up the Legend Sword. Dia is at the Wyvern spot, picking up a white shirt in the Lunar Subterrain, going on a top-down approach to these bosses in a Lunar Subterrain. Yep, so right now, uh, for our, it seems that a lot of these places are kind of going to be set, just based on when everyone's going to be entering the Zeromas fight, but you cannot take Zeromas lightly. Very easy to have a, a bad big bang that comes out and dunks on your white mage, especially when that white mage is Porum. Uh, you can always have a chain, like the big bang happens and then you've managed to tip Zeromas into Meteo phase and take bonus damage that way. Uh, so any racer can wipe. Anyone who does, boom, the person behind you, coming in hot on your heels. So fight this Aromas fight carefully. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, um, the kind of the, the good thing about this party is that they do have Yang who has a lot of hit points. So if they do get that, you know, big bang into Meteo, as you talked about, hopefully, you know, he'd be able to survive that. Porum, if she, probably not so much, uh, neither would Iridia, but, um, you know, they've got a pretty good party set up here. So uh, as long as Paranoia takes this, you know, slow and he is, uh, ooh, Porum almost going down to that, to that big bang, but she does survive. Um, he's, you know, he's pushing along, you know, pretty well here. Yep. Already in Meteo phase, and you see, boom, the Big Bang into Meteo. Both his Ridium Porum are down, but there's the Flash. The Zerkers, especially that Yang, able to finish off this fight. Paranoia has won your humming way open with a final time of 1 hour, 37 minutes, 33 seconds. Get your GGs out in chat. We'll see if we can get uh, Paranoia in here in just a minute. Meanwhile, Tingle Nader picks up his crystal, the Foz, still doing an egg grind. Undoubtedly just saw the dot done on the IRC channel. Uh, I'm not sure if he's uh, if he has necessarily the levels he want, but they may be the levels he's going with. And Dia in the right spot as well, taking on this evil wall, and that'll be the uh, the final piece of Dia's puzzle as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, very nicely played by Paranoia. GG to him uh, winning this humming way open. And LaFaz and Tingle Nader right on his <laughs> on his uh, humming way tail about to go into their Zeromas fights in just a moment here. We'll see. It's going to be pretty close for second place, um, probably to see which one of them takes that second place finish. Oh, yeah. And of course, uh, we'll, we, we saw LaFaz grinding and... Paranoia's Porum had nearly 2,000 HP. Very beefy Porum, 1,963, I believe, was the final HP tally. I don't think LaFaz and Tinglenator have th those kind of levels quite yet. So it's going to be much riskier fights for them. Uh, we'll see which of them manages to take second place here. Yeah, that is a very high hit point total for Paranoia's Porum. Um, she, as we've said, uh, she is the squishiest of the white mages. Uh, so he did a little bit of extra leveling to get her up to those hit point levels. And I believe that we are now joined by our champion, Paranoia. Uh, GG, Paranoia, congratulations on your first place finish. Hey, thank you. Uh, I am having issues getting my stream, stream to come back up for a... Oh, well. <laughs> it's all good. The uh, but congratulations. Uh, first thing I want to ask you is what went through your head when you found the darkness crystal on Ordeals, the literal last place you checked on the blue planet. Uh, a lot of cursing, if I'm being frank. Did you a lot think more talking about repeat on stream. <laughs> Fair enough. Did you did you think that you were in good shape? Did you think, oh, everyone else completely skipped this as well? Or did you think, I am so far behind? What went through your head with that? Um, when, uh, what, 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 what went through my head is like, of course it's here. Why wouldn't it be? Um, no, I was like, oh, I mean... Honestly, I did not want to go up Ordeals the entire sea because I had no reason to do so. So, of course, Miss Dragon and, uh, 
you know, Darkness Crystal were up there. I got the Twin Heart from D-Mist and went like, no, I'm going to the moon. Yeah, and what impacted that decision? Was it just that you had gotten them both so late, or are you just typically, we can save music for later, let me go where all the bosses are? Uh, more the later, and I got that Darkness Crystal super late. And I was like, you know, I could do Bahamut first, try to metagame this, but I was not feeling that. I went straight down to the value spot, which had evil wall. Yeah, how hard was your heart pounding when you were down to, I believe you had gotten crushed down to two characters at one part during the final phase of that fight? And it was just like, please let me resurrect people. No, and I had to restart the fight. Well, you still pulled off the victory. You made it all the way through the Hummingway Open through a bunch of rude seeds. Uh, do you have any thoughts on what kind of a Zoroma Sprite you're going to be requesting? You know, I don't know at the moment. I will figure that out real soon. Well, we'll be looking forward to seeing it. Uh, for now, what else do you have going on now that the Hopin's wrapped up? Are you still going to be uh, doing weeklies with us? You got other games you've been playing oh, lately? I, I'm definitely going to be doing the weeklies. I am just, and I'm looking forward to getting crushed in Z1R. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Well, everyone remember, make sure you give all of our racers a follow, not just Paranoia, although Paranoia, you killed it tonight. Looking forward to seeing more of that in the future. And uh, do you have any final thoughts before we focus in on the Saromas fight? Couldn't quite hear you there. Oh no, did we lose Paranoia? Oh, I'm here. Oh, okay. Any final thoughts before we uh, pay closer attention to LaFaz and Tinglenator? Uh, not really. Uh, about the rudest thing that seed was, I, I mean, I felt like, about the rudest thing that seed was Evil Wall. <laughs> I, I just I do I dislike that boss so much but when it turns out you don't have adamant so you can't like just take him trucking you to the face and he moves so fast and I hate it. Absolutely. Well meanwhile back on the main screen LaFaz just ate a very nasty big bang, took down both his mages, both his Porum and his Rydia are down, managed to get a life potion up on Porum, so she's ready to get some healing going on. Uh Tanglenator also having rough luck, Porum falling. Uh, Rydia, only a few hundred HP left, uh, and Dia's entering the fight hot on their heels. If either of them takes a wipe, they could they could very easily be giving up that second place to their op opposition. So let's, uh, yeah, this is very intense Aromas fight. Uh, Paranoia, I think your dot done motivated uh, some of our racers to rush in here a little sooner than they might have liked to. And we're going to see if they can uh, pull things together to get through this fight in spite of these low-level, low-HP mages. And Dia has transformed his Aromas as well. Three creepy rabbits all on screen at once. This is a little bit unnerving to see all three of them staring into your soul. <laughs> But Hummingway loves you and <laughs> wants you to be happy. <laughs> okay, I'm never doing that voice again. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely a very, very uh, <laughs> edge of your seat uh, race for second place. Uh, we see um, we see Tinglenator about to take another Big Bang. Uh, his Porum does not survive that. Neither does Edge. Uh, his Meridia and Kane barely survive it. Meanwhile, I'm uh, Lafaz. It looks like he's got a dead Sid and a dead Meridia. Meanwhile, Dia's about to take the first Big Bang here. So we'll we'll see uh, who is going to be able to take this humming miss down first for the second place finish. One thing I am curious about with Dia's setup is that he does have a Ridia in the middle instead of that bottom level Sid. Uh, so. The, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how his turn utility matches up to Zeromus' here. Uh, I don't think, I mean, maybe she's up to 28 agility, in which case, great. Very good. It's about as good as you're going to get for your mages. Uh, but also, his edge doing really good work. So this is still anybody's finish. Can't wait to see who hits that dot done first, or second, I, as it were. I wonder if Dia having Rydia in the middle was intentional because he did make a pit stop at Kaipo uh, to get that low-level Sid before going on to Troya. So, uh, you know, that would be 
he he had to switch. I, I don't know if it was a higher level Sid. I don't remember who he had there, but he switched somebody out for that low level Sid. You'd think he'd be using him as an anchor in that case. Ooh, and Lafaz's Yang eating a nuke to the face, going down to below 100 HP. Uh, manages to get, pour him up and cure three though. Tinglinator also throwing the cure threes, trying to get everything back on the rails. And Diaz fight looking very clean right now. Still no dot duns from these three in the IRC channel. Ten cure threes left for Tinglenator has Yang on chemistry duty. Lafaz using the crystal on uh, uh, his humming miss in order to, uh, it is going to, you know, get a new counter, but using that crystal in order to try to nerf the next Big Bang, we'll see if he got the timing down right. That can be really difficult to get the timing correct. Yeah, and Tinglenator takes the wipe. If Lafaz correctly nerfed this, it's great for him if he, he mistimed it. Oh, both Yang and Porum. Kane barely standing, but rocks are falling. If Kane can dodge this, oh no. Oh no. Oh, that is a wipe for Lafaz. Uh, that is that is really tough to see. So now now Dia has a clear lead. Um, his party is struggling a little bit. So we'll see if he can maintain uh, his lead on his Aromas fight. Boom, there is the flash. Dia has taken second, snatched it back from Tinglenator and Lafaz, coming in with a 147-31. Gigi's out for Dia, seemed to be dangerously close to taking that fourth place, but just managed that Zoromas fight a little bit better. Uh, never underestimate the final boss, especially when it's a creepy anime rabbit from the moon. Absolutely. GG to Dia. Uh, and it really just shows the quality of our runners. And um, they've really come a long way, I think. These were runners who uh, either, I don't know if they just didn't attempt to qualify for the Zenith's Zone League or if they didn't get into the uh, round of 32. But these are still very top notch runners, all of these uh, runners who are in this. Uh, I mean, we open a final to show the quality of, of how good of players they've become and that they've how, how much they've progressed through this tournament. Absolutely. Yeah. We did see Tinglenator there head over to Kaipo to swap out an anchor, did pick up that base level Sid, and it's between Tinglenator and Lafaz again. Meanwhile, I think we're about to get uh, Dia pulled in. And we are joined by Dia. GG. Congrats on second place. Thank you. Uh, so, just so you know, you have Lafaz... to get the big whale before you get the uh, sort of chocobo. Is one thing I want to point out. Oh, oh, <laughs> you're, you're trying to the, the chocobo trick. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. Well, you know that Lafaz and Tinglenator were both in the Zoromas fight before you, but they each took a wipe. Their uh, their Ridias and their Porums were not as hardy as yours. So those extra moon fights you had done while hunting your Legend Sword paid off greatly for you. Helped you wow. manage that Zoromas fight beautifully. That's... I figured I was well behind once, like, it was down to darkness where Hen D missed for the darkness crystal. Well, uh, kind of funny thing that you mentioned that is that uh, I think that probably all of you felt that way. I know that Paranoia said the same thing because all of you ended up going to Mount Ordeals at the same time. Literally all of you had had gone off in different directions and done different things uh, in the underground and such. And then all of you ended up uh, reconverging on Mount Ordeals at the same time. So wow. uh, what made you decide your routing, um, you know, and, and uh, how, how were you feeling when you did decide to go up to Mount Ordeals and finally find that Demist and that Darkness Crystal? Once I went up there, like, I felt very behind um, because the top of tower check along with going all the way down to check the King Queen Evans spot. Because I figured, like, if it's on ordeals, someone probably went up there early and was able to get the levels before and would be able to sweep through the rest of the seed easily. So I was just kind of like, okay, I'm in gamble mode. I have to find something. It has to be behind this hook or I'm screwed. 
<laughs> you know, that's so funny because literally all four of you are heading up ordeals at the same time. And I, I told Nagy, comment, every single one of them is going to think they are so ridiculously behind when they're all gaining lunar access at the exact same moment. Wow. So I'm, I'm glad that you kind of confirmed that was what was going through your head at that time. Yeah. And then just just don't do top down moon ever. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> well, you had a really nice comeback. Um, you know, like we said, uh, I think everybody else did bottom up, and so they did find the legend sword before you. Uh, but you had you had such a nice comeback in your Zeromus fight. Uh, what did you think of that uh, custom Zeromus sprite that we had for uh, this final match? That was amazing. Great job, to Scala, on that one. Like, that's just a very impressive. Sprite. I do think, just based on the timing, that when we saw uh, Paranoia's Dot Done come in the IRC channel, Lafaz and Tinglenator both kind of ceased their grind instantly. And that, uh, I, I dare say, inevitably led to those wipes. So it's, it's kind of funny that if, uh, if, uh, Paranoia had taken longer on his grind or longer to find the crystal, it could have actually caused you to get you know, third or fourth rather than getting second like you did. So it's kind of funny that Paranoia making the right moon gamble actually yeah. paid off for you quite a bit as well in that regard. Yeah. Yes. Just unfortunately, it's a winner take all this time, though. Hey, you're telling me. I know, man. <laughs> Uh, Odia, love to watch you race, love to have been racing you with all these pickup races recently. Mm -hmm. Uh, you gonna be getting into the community races as they start back up these next few weeks? Yeah, time for me to learn other flag sets, so. Well, wait till you meet our friend Adam in armor. It's, it's the thing of beauty. <laughs> Don't wait. forget Edward with the spoon. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be fun. Well, any final thoughts before we go back to uh, these Aromas fights that are still ongoing? Just one thing. I want to let Paranoia know. I have 19 points. You have 18. So who's the real winner? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. See. Take care. Thanks for the commentary and thanks to the restream team. So thanks to all you guys. <laughs> well, GG on your second place finish. Thank you. GG's. Shots fired at Paranoia. Looking forward to seeing you both uh, this coming Friday when weeklies start back up. Friday the 27th. I'm looking for a little salty Paranoia versus Dia action in that Friday night race. What do you think, Maggie? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I think that it's going to be great to see our weekly races start back up and great to see some different flag sets and hopefully see some runners who maybe we haven't seen in a while since they, uh, you know, haven't maybe they got out of the league or the hope in uh, you know a few weeks ago and they haven't had a chance to run lately get some some uh you know some both fresh blood and also blood that it just has, hasn't been running lately so definitely join us for those community races check out our discord for more details on that those are going to be starting this coming starting up again this coming friday oh yeah really looking forward we've gotten so much great talent that uh every, both these leagues both the zima Sun league and the humming way open have been a crucible just making people get better and better and better lots of fresh talent at the game excited to see uh these co featured community races with big old crowds again it's a little different strategy when you're racing a, a pack of 20 rather than a pack of four so no oh, absolutely yeah we'll, we'll see how these uh how everything plays out should be a good time if you think that psyching yourself out when you're racing against three other people and you don't see a dot done comes, just wait till you're racing against 13 other people. <laughs> <laughs> so we did see Tinglenator take another unfortunate wipe. Um, so he's going straight back in. Uh, and Lafaz is, uh, you know, still still going up against this um, humming miss took a oh man his porum just took a really high nuke and it's got 10 hit points left and now is taking a big bang right behind it well as long as this is properly nerfed it's not so bad let's see what the damage numbers are oh it, it looks like it lagged out uh yang is still in good shape 
but the funny thing about that is that the Big Bang means that we don't have to have the HP ran out message appear, which, aside from taking the time, feels a little bit like the game's taunting me. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. oh you actually couldn't get a heal off in time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a feels bad right there. <laughs> <laughs> But we do have rocks falling, and that Yong has a lot of HP left. Can probably survive two more if lucky. Ooh, but this is risky. Trying to get another party member up. Better hope we got some good magic evade on that poor um, Lafaz, or Ooh. this is dangerous. Ooh. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh, Laura, holding on. oh my gosh she's alive <laughs> you know that's again magic evade matters it matters a lot when you get down to this phase full health on the porum battle of attrition at this point 14 cure threes in the tank choosing to try to life someone up and hope for another evade Whew. all right This is really great. I mean, we, oh, another dodged Meteo by a oh, Okay. I'm like biting my lips here. Oh, oh. The clutchest of Porums going on right now. Another Meteo, though, before she can cure up, before that Porum can cure up Yong. She dodges it again. Oh, but Yong goes down again. He's looking for something, anything, but all he can do, I think, at this point is heal her. Yeah, Porum's like, what have I got in the bag? What's in the bag? What's in the bag? <laughs> <laughs> BG Rich rooting for a uh, a berserked Porum to finish out the seed. That would be pretty cool. I, w I wouldn't hate that. We are seeing some of the issues here with, uh, with you know, going to this fight under-leveled. Uh, very hard to fully pick up either this Kane, Sid, or Yang without the Life 2 spell. It's a little bit slow, but it may be better than this Battle of Attrition we've got going on here. Uh, Yang, it may be better to life up Kane instead of Yang here. Uh, Yang does not get much in the way of Magic Evade. Uh, depending on the gear we have on Kane, he may be more likely to dodge a Meteo. So, uh, May even be better to life up Iridia. She's well equipped. She could dodge it, maybe throw a nuke to finish the fight. Uh, I think Yang is the wrong one to try to life up right here. Oh, oh. he's taking. Oh, there it is. He took another Meteo before he was able to heal her up there. Yeah, Porum's, Porum's stamina bar ran out. Could not keep dodging at that point. And, uh,. It's still down to either one of these racers. Let's uh, focus back in on Tinglenator. Let's see how the fight is going for him. Not sure if this Big Bang is nerfed or not. Definitely not. Porum falls. Rydia is still up, though. So Tinglenator does have a character up. And also has chosen not to Berserk Kane this run, uh, letting him be a chemist and a, uh, a wall target for these Rydia nukes. Uh, I like this because this way, if a Big Bang goes awry, Kane will be alive to help get the party back on their feet. Yeah, still uh, still anybody's game here between Tingle Nader and LaFaz. Looks like LaFaz is, is maybe doing some... Uh, re-equipping and some menuing before he goes right back into his fight, thinking of how he can uh, change up his party and, uh, you know, try to just try something to avoid what happened the last couple of times that he went into this fight. Yeah, but the funny thing I don't think I saw either one of these racers do is just turn down your battle speed a notch. Uh, admittedly, it slows the fight down, but it often gives you more of an advantage than... Uh, than the AI, obviously. It acts instantly no matter what. And getting those, you know, extra actions in just to get your cures off, throw your life potions before uh, Zeromus takes its next turn can save you a lot of grief. Oh yeah, absolutely. 
But Tangonator looking very clean here. Again, not zerking the cane. Putting the cane on chemistry duty, on, hey, survive this big bang duty. A very important duty. <laughs> if, you do, if no one survives the big bang, you don't you don't win. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's a great job. It's a noble calling. And Kane's doing a pretty great job of it so far. Yeah, absolutely. He, of all of the uh, characters on his team, uh, Kane's got the most hit points, probably also has uh, the best uh, magic defense, I'm going to guess, uh, with his gear. So taking those big bangs like a champ and able to get his party up uh, once they fall or get to those low HP uh, after those big bangs. Yeah. And chat correcting me. Thank you, chat, pointing out that Tinglenator did turn that battle speed down to three for this round. And it looks like between that and the Kane strategic change, this is looking very clean for Tinglenator. I, I've got high hopes for how this fight's going to turn out. Yeah, it's it's a long fight, but it's, it's a safe fight. We're seeing that he's able to survive this much uh, more so than, than the last attempt that he made. Yeah, looking very good. And these nukes from Rydia doing several thousand damage. The Zert uh, Edge doing good work as well. Well, choosing to only manually fight this time. Porum does eat the direct nuke, but hey, Kane, uh, actually uh, curious, choosing to, oh, maybe he's switching duty this time. Maybe it's Kane's turn to do damage and... Uh, or, never mind, rocks are falling. Things are looking there's, very good here. Yep, there's the Meteo phase, and uh, yeah, he's he's going to pull that last nuke out with Rydia, and between that and his Berserk Cane, he should be he should be finishing this up in just a few moments. Oh, yeah, 3,500 on that swing from Berserk Cane. Great damage. The nuke does 6240, and one swing from Edge. There's the flash. Tinglenator has come in third place. Great adjustments to pull out that Zeromas fight. Get your GGs out for Tingle. We'll see if we can get them into chat for an interview in just a minute. And with that, we are joined by Tinglenator. Tinglenator, GG, congrats on third. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, so I'm gonna ask you the same question I've asked all your opponents, uh, just for starters. What did you think when you found the Mist Dragon and the Darkness Crystal both on ordeals? Um, considering the fact that I pretty much tried to full clear um, the Underworld first, I was kind of worried, but I also figured that I have ended up finding Adam at first, um, and I doubt anybody would have been able to grind. So I was like, I felt like I was in a pretty comfortable position at that point. Um, I'm pretty sure the only thing I should have done was go straight to the moon instead of risking my luck on both of the Trojan key items. Yeah, I think you were the only one who had not done Zod at that point. It did give you your white mage, at least. And uh, a couple of other racers also went for the music. Uh, all of you trying to be the people's champion, and we definitely enjoyed that uh, that Mog's theme. So good on you for doing that, at least. Chat is wanting to know, and uh, I am curious, too, now that they have reminded us, uh, when you did decide to go to Ordeals, it looked like you... You went there and you weren't quite sure if you wanted to go or not. You you landed your airship and then you got back, back in your airship and then you landed your airship yeah. again. And, and then you kind of went halfway up the mountain and then you came back down. What, what, what was going on with that? So I had realized that at this point, as most people have been aware, especially the other runners, cabins were locked on the moon. Um, and I had just finished beating both of the Fey March bosses. So by the time I started going up the moon, I realized the only person I had at full health was... Um, it was Radia. Uh, sorry, because I had done Tower, and I ran into Valvalis, who weaked everybody but Radia, and Radia had no more magic left as well. So I would literally try to fight everything up there with just a Radia. I was like, I'll, I'll take my chances doing something else real quick first. Okay, yes, because I do remember seeing you then go to Eblan and you you rested at the inn. So okay, that 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 does make a little bit yeah, more sense. Yeah, I figured. I, I went to Eblan thinking that maybe there's cabins there, maybe that would help me. And then I was like, I'll check what the character is there. And I was like, oh, it's Edge, perfect. And then I'm like, what if Mist Dragon is here? 
So I did a quick check, right. and then uh, after all that was done, I was like, all right, screw it, let's go back to ordeals. Yeah, and hey, you aren't the only one who made that check. Uh, Dia also, realizing that only ordeals is left, let, let's take the peek just in case. Yeah. Uh, another thing I was wondering, though, is when you saw Paranoia's dot done, it looked like you kind of cut your grind off early. Did you do that because you saw a dot done in chat, or did you like your levels with your team anyway? What uh, made you decide I... this was the time to go? So at that point, I believe he had done that when I was coming, when I had just found the Legend Sword to begin with. And my major problem was the fact that I had run out of Sirens. So I went back to Earth, immediately went to Baron, bought more Sirens, got the Crystal, and then did one egg grind, which got me the levels for Nuke and White, and then I immediately went. Gotcha. Uh, uh, the only now... problem is, oh. that, of course, as you saw with my party, I had uh, too high of an agility anchor. Uh, and that kind of boned me at the end. <laughs> yeah, tell us a little bit about the adjustments you made, because we saw a few iterations of your Zeromas fight. What changes did you make, and how do you think they impacted your, your success on that final run? Um, so, at the end of the day, I think my major problem was uh, having Kane and Edge both berserked, because they're the only ones who would more than likely survive a full HP Big Bang. Um, I decided to, on the last fight, to do it with Kane and decided to get rid of Yang too because after the first fight, Yang's damage output was nowhere close to Sid or Kane's. Or not Sid, uh, Edge or Kane's. So I got rid of him, put in the Sid that I knew was at uh, Kaipo, uh, and then I just went from there. Uh, realized the second time around that I did the same mistake with the Zerking, uh, and to be safe on the third time around, I decided to. Whew, uh, put it to battle speed three just to be safe. I thought that was really clever on all fronts. Uh, love to see it, you know, because at, when you're having those kind of wipes, you, you can either go grind more or you can look at your other options. And you definitely contemplated those other options, came up with some really clever ways uh, to guarantee you got through the fight. And it, uh, it paid off on that run. So I think that was that showed, I know, you know, with the humming way open we have a lot of newer runners to the game but that was some really great like high level thinking there and it was great to see on stream i really enjoyed that yeah um i mean big shout outs to homagus because he's pretty much the guy who got me into doing this and i've learned a lot just from watching him um and also to direwolf because like the first time i started playing this game he showed up and started teaching me a lot of the stuff that i didn't know about so if it wasn't for them two i probably wouldn't have even thought of doing that and just kept going in and dying well, you did great in the hoping, uh, and we are hoping, <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, we're hoping to see you in these upcoming weeklies, community races start back up on Friday. You gonna try your hand at a few other upcoming uh, varying flag sets? Uh, probably, uh, I'm probably gonna take a break for a little while because this game has pretty much taken over my life for the last few weeks. Um, but other than that, as long as I don't see Hummingway's face for a little while, I think I'll be good. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, any final thoughts before we go focus in on uh, LaFaz's current Zeromas fight? Um, value is not always there. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, let's get one more round of GG's in chat for Tinglenator. Great race. Looking forward to seeing you. Take a little break, but really hoping to see you on these community races going forward. Yeah, no, thanks for hosting the event. GG. And LaFaz here has won Zert Yang, hoping to finish the fight off. There's a black hole, chance to life up another character uh, if he can get a turn in quickly here. Let's see. There's the final non Zerk hit. Ooh, and we are in nuke phase. Ooh. That's a, a, going to be another unfortunate wipe for LaFaz. Um, so we'll see if he decides to, where he decides to go from here, if he's going to maybe do some uh, extra grinding or any other adjustments that he makes. Uh, he actually has forfeited in the uh, in the SRL channel, uh, choosing not to take the time to grind, not going to, to change the team up. Uh, we'll see if he wants to come in for an interview anyway. Oh no, he ate his mic cord with his vacuum today. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, I'm going to ask him if he has any words he wants to share with the with the chat. Uh, 
Yeah, absolutely. And uh, everybody, uh, you know, we, we saw some really great running from all of our racers. So GG to all of our racers and to LaFaz for sticking it out right to the end of there. Uh, you know, he took some really unfortunate wipes. We saw him really, really, uh, you know, pushing forward uh, with those those medios and those big bangs. So, you know, GG to him for, um, you know, putting on such a great show for us tonight. And he has asked, uh, and okay, I, I don't know if he wants me to read all of these or take this as uh, stage directions, but I'm assuming the latter. Uh, he says, uh, I will be back. Uh, so we've not seen the last of the Foz. Uh, he will be racing in the future. He's going to get his revenge on that humming miss, I'm sure. And, uh, you know, get those GGs out once more for LaFaz. And then I think at this point, Scala, I think we're going to turn it over to you. You may have uh, some more surprises, I think you mentioned. Scala, I don't know if you uh, if you're talking and just didn't unmute yourself, or if you are purposely uh, making us uh, fill with anticipation. It oh. is very cute art. <laughs> okay, gotcha. So Scala's talking. Her her mic's muted on the stream, but she wanted to share this far more adorable hummingway. You know, I think I like the hummingway a lot better with its eyes closed. Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's not quite as like I'm gonna see a suck your soul out. <laughs> well, gotcha. Well, really cute. Again, less a uh, little less nightmarish. Quick reminder, everyone in chat, make sure you follow the runners tonight. They did a great job. They hung in there with uh, the most a, a very a surprisingly cruel seed in a lot of fun ways. Uh, the most horrific of boss sprites we've ever seen. <laughs> Uh, and of course, huge shout out to the entire stream team, Scala Kitty, handling the restream for us tonight, Gambit handling that tracking as our racers went all over the place. And uh, Maggie, it's been really fun working with you tonight, my friend. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you, Invenerable and Scala and Gambit for putting on such a great show tonight. And uh, our runners, of course, for putting on such a great race for us. Um, and I uh, just kind of want to reiterate what... Um, uh, what we said in our last interview here about uh, the community. Uh, we have a really great community uh, on Discord and on, on uh, Twitch here. If, if you're joining us and you haven't joined us, you're kind of new, definitely feel free to come out to some of our events. We've got the community races that are going to be starting up again here. Uh, join us in Discord. Um, we're more than happy to have newbies and help newbies out and um, have you join us for the community events that are going to be starting up again this week. So, um, yeah, uh, I hope to see everybody uh, come out and join us for uh, whatever next event we have uh, that the admins start up for us and just the community races as they start up again here. I added my mic to the scene just so I can tell everyone to stop bullying my poor humming way. It's such a cute <laughs> humming way, though. <laughs> bullied it though it's okay i think it's I, I actually found the whole thing funny but uh since i do have the mic on i'll let you know who we are all gonna go and uh raid this evening we are gonna throw this over to lore master motos uh who is uh playing some uh free enterprise as well please go ahead give him uh your love as well and uh we will see you starting on friday night friday night community races start back up We'll be really happy to have uh, everyone come back out and enjoy that. So until then, uh, we'll see you all next time. Good night, everyone. Good night.